All right, I am back, back again. I'm gonna do the whole, you know, Doomer, Incel, Black Pill, TFL, MGTOW, misog misogyny, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I got, uh, I got depressed, unwanted man here, and we're gonna just hang out and talk about stuff. How's it going? Uh, should I call you dumb? Uh, I don't care. Uh, people call me different things. Dumb's well, fine. Well, dumb's fine. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dumb. How you doing, bud? All right. I was telling you earlier. Uh, yeah. I'm just trying to reset my Wi-Fi and uh, do a few other things around the house. I've been studying about anxiety issues. I mean, I've been studying about it for years, ever since I started having these problems. But um, I'm not consistent with it. And so, like, I'm trying to shut off the Wi-Fi again. I tried it before. And I'm trying, like, aromatherapy. You know, I got, I'm smelling lavender right now. I tried that before. Uh, I don't know. I'm doing all kinds of things. And um, I'm trying to get my core body temperature up. Trying that. But, yeah, I've been suffering uh, with anxiety. And uh, and it, it sucks. I always seem to go in between the depression and anxiety. And... Uh, Right now, it's, it's anxiety, and everybody blames it on alcohol, so I stopped that. I don't know. We'll see if that does anything. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to try everything under this and see if that helps, because living like this is just terrible. Why are you so anxious, bud? Yeah, there's no reason. Um, this is this is, this is is the, the disorder. I mean, I, you know, like I was trying to go to sleep last night. I was laying on the, on, on the couch, and... Uh, I sleep better on the couch, so I've been out there for the past couple of months. And, uh, and uh, but yeah, I've been having I was having issues on and on off all day, and then uh, just all of a sudden out of the blue, I just feel like I'm dying. Like you know, like my stomach's in ropes, and you know, I get chest pain and heart palpitations, and extremities feel all tingly, and you know, all this stuff is going on, things I can't describe, and then it's like, how the hell do you sleep? So, uh. Yeah, so then, suggest jerking off. Well, I did that the night before last. <laughs> and uh well no, what happened is so dude, I'm so fucked up. My I I should just die really. Well because, before you go on, uh, before you go on, Dom, uh, yeah. why don't you tell us who you are? Like when you, uh, when, you when you came onto the scene and uh you know just tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes, yeah, so I'm uh, I'm what we call a Toddist. Uh we <laughs> I I seen you in the chat, so I know you you watch uh, sometimes, but um, yeah, I came from um, Todd Thundercock, or he calls himself Todd the Autistic Kermit right now. Uh, I found him a couple years ago, and then uh, he kind of inspired me to tell my story, come on. And uh, yeah, I had a channel before, and then and then I, I deleted it because I I got I got made fun of, and I couldn't handle it at the time. <laughs> and. <laughs> So somebody made fun of my earlobes, and I was like, I was just like freaking out and uh, deleted the whole goddamn thing. But before I before I deleted the whole goddamn channel, I made a video about why I was leaving. And who does that? I don't know. I do. So um, so then I came back probably like a month later or something, and uh, and just restarted a new channel. And uh, yeah, so I just tell my, um, you know my. Uh, yeah, about my depressive and anxiety issues and uh, problems with women and whatever, loneliness and whatever's going on. And now it's kind of turned out to just, it turned into like, we just kind of hang out now. Like I do a lot of lives and we'll just hang out and I'll play something stupid and and uh, we'll talk about whatever, whatever the chat brings up. Because I ran out of stuff to talk about a while ago. So whatever people in the chat bring up and I'll, I'll uh, you know, I'll address that, I'll give my opinion. So. Cool. Uh, yeah, I've been watching you for a while. I enjoy watching your uh, your YouTube. Oh, that, oh thanks, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think I'm boring sometimes, but uh, I mean, people come in and, and want to hang out. So, I mean, a lot of times, like, chat's not addressed to me, which which is perfectly fine, and they'll just be talking to each other. But that's what I like, you know. We're kind of building a community, and uh, uh, yeah. And then well, I've, I've been, I've enjoyed how like revealing you are. Like you've you're not like afraid to just be yourself and you're not like, like putting up, uh, you know, you're not trying to sugarcoat or. Portray, yeah. That's, that's portray. from Todd because that, that, that's how he was. Like I, when I first saw Todd, like I was really, I, it was a breath of fresh air when he, he would just come on YouTube and be like, yeah, I'm ugly, you know? And, and, um, 
you know, he, he would just uh, just speak about himself in ways that, and honest, uh, just being brutally honest, and um, and I I wanted to be like that. So, uh, so that's that's the way I've been. I've been like no filter. Well, it's kind of nice how you just you know you're vulnerable, you're revealing. Um, you don't really care about like. Oh uh, well, yeah, I was crying the other day because I was drunk, and that's another reason why I got stopped drinking. Because... I mean, you got trash all over the background. <laughs> Like you don't have like a green I, screen. <laughs> this is great. Like, like you're just you're just in your house, just kind of just rambling about like life. I yeah. love it, man. I love it. I, I mean, you know, and dumb. I don't want to make you like. I don't want to. I, I mean, I. I listen to a guy who's just kind of like complaining about the the world, and yeah, it just kind of makes. I don't. I don't sound. Uh, I don't. I don't know how to sound. I don't want to sound kind of weird, but. It's kind of nice to hear you just like saying what you really think and feel. Like, I just think so many men are kind of holding it all in. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of men I, I, I deal with at work. They, they're not expressive. They're, they're not expressing themselves. And then if they are, they're lying. And that's why I like watching you. Yeah. I had the same issues. Like when I would talk to guys, I mean, that's why this is a great, um, you know, this is a great way to, uh, you know, get stuff out, you know, and, um, because, you know, I would try to talk to people in real life, like guys at work and nobody wanted to talk about the issues I wanted to talk about, like ever. So, I mean, you know, they would give you like, you know, a 10 second, you know, whatever, you know, get some sleep, you know, yeah, whatever. like guys at my work, I want to talk about like, uh, weather or, or sports yeah. ball. I want to talk about like women politics and like, well, I always want to talk about like death <laughs> and like hell. And, and like, why are we here? And, um, yeah, uh, like everything's just meaningless and pointless and like, nobody wants to talk about that. <laughs> I guess I was bringing them all down. I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, so, so yes, yeah, so this is a great outlet for me and I'll just come in here and, and speak my mind. And, um, some people agree, some people disagree and, uh, but yeah, we'll have a, we'll have a discourse. We'll have a conversation. Do you, and, uh, uh, Dom, do you regret, you know, uh, doing a face reveal um being on the internet does it does it do you, do you wish you could take it back no no i don't um like i again i was kind of copying todd and uh, i know everybody accuses me of like doing everything because of him but like i'll put my legs up and people will say oh you're being like todd well more than more people than just todd put their legs up but whatever uh so i'll um now nah, i lost my train of thought here um Wait, what would you ask me? Um, just the face reveal. Um, oh, oh, yeah, the face reveal. Only, yeah, uh, being, yeah. Being so on, being on the internet. So the only reason I would care is if like it got me fired or something. Well, I'm not even working right now, and like I was kind of concerned about that. Like one of my last, actually, yeah, one the last day that I worked, I did I did a reveal about where I worked. And I was like, well, this is it. This is my last day. So I'll show you guys where, where I was working. But like, if it doesn't affect like my work, like I got no wife, I got no kids. I got no one who gives her a shit. So like I got no repercussions except like I said, if I would get fired, but I'm not even working right now. So I really don't care. Um, so no, I don't, I don't regret it. I mean, you, you do open up yourself to criticism and, and stuff, but then people can see like, you know, you're a real person. You are who you say you are. You're, you're not Chad or, or whatever. And, um, uh, yeah, so it, it's been it's beneficial, but but it is a lot less anxiety, I guess, if you if you don't show yourself. We had someone in the in the live chat. They asked you if uh, if you're a Christ tart. Uh, Christ? What, like a Christian? Uh or, yeah, like someone who's buys into like the Christian religion as like a, a cope. You know, with this kind of well, you know, you're dealing with. yeah. So I grew up in the Christian church. Um, I mean, I I kind of had my doubts most of my life. Like I never really saw any proof of God or anything. I mean, I I since lost my my faith in religion, and I kind of make fun of it a lot because none of it really makes any sense. Um, but like, it is a good cope. Like, uh, Reform Stoic. You know, he he he's a Catholic. Like, it's a good cope for him. Like, I I would never try to dissuade somebody from believing in, in something. I mean, it, it helps a lot of people. It helps people, you know, when they go to sleep at night if they don't wake up. You know, where where, where they're going when they die. But like, so like when I lost my faith, yeah. So it opened up like, well, 
I always thought like I was going to go to heaven or something. Like I was, I was always worried I was going to hell, but you know, at least I had hope I, I could go to heaven or something or my way there, whatever. But then once I lost my faith, it kind of opened up like an eternity, uh, you know, like or nothingness. And, and I don't know, it really freaks me out. So like I, I kind of wish I was still, um, you know, like a Christian, I could believe that stuff. But yeah, I don't, I can't, I can't believe it. It just doesn't make any sense. Like, yeah, you got to believe in this God, man. Like, God sent Himself, basically His Son Himself, and uh, you know, He He had to die. I, he just couldn't forgive us of our sins. You know, but, I, I don't know. The, the whole foundation is just stupid. It doesn't make any sense. Like, if I was God, I would just forgive everybody. So, uh, so no, know, so that's a long answer to to the question. <laughs> I'm a big fan of yours. You know, I, I like the, you have like a good soul, a good spirit. You're like, a, you're a nice guy. You're, you have uh good intentions. You're not uh, out to like get one over on somebody. It's yeah. But I, I'm not so sure that's what attracts women. Unfortunately. <laughs> uh, no, like you can't, like Todd always said that, like he, like you can't be yourself. You really can't. Uh, now like Donna, like she seems to like, I don't know what's up with her, but like, I mean, I mean, there are a few women that come on my channel, but like, uh, yeah, it does like a push away a lot of them. Like you can't be honest with them. You can't say like, you know, you don't like fat women and stuff like, you know, they, <laughs> I, and I, I'm fat myself. So like, I, but I'm just, I'm just trying to just be honest that like, you know, and they don't, yeah, I guess, yeah, they don't want you to be honest about, about stuff. Uh, but I'm not here to try to impress women. Like I know they don't like me. Like I knew that my whole life, and so it's, it was mostly. I mean, anybody can come hang out. Like, but like I'm not going to. I mean, everybody calls me a simp, and whatever. Like maybe I am, but like I'm not going to pull punches just because a woman's on there. Like we were going pretty hardcore last night with uh, Robin, and um, you know. But I kind of felt bad a little bit about. Uh, some of the stuff she was getting targeted with, but uh, yeah, so some women hang around, most don't. But, did yeah. you uh, did you ever like go to prom as a young person? No, no, did your brother? No, no. uh, yeah, I think most of us were, were rejects, uh, you know, when we were younger, or, or if not, re we just didn't really have a lot of friends. I mean. Most of my brothers and sisters had friends, if not all of them, but like they weren't super popular. Uh, but yeah, I never went to the prom. I never had a date. I never, um, like, I never really asked anyone out in high school. I don't think, but no one was ever interested in me, and I and I could just tell like I wasn't desirable. And so, you know, like girls would pick on me. Like I had this one girl who like knocked the glasses off my face because they were broken. I had tape in the middle. Oh, and really? yeah. you had tape in the middle of your glasses yeah. in school. Well, what are you supposed to do when, 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 when they're brutal, man? When, when, oh, when they break, but yeah, oh. so so she was calling me names, knocked them off my face, and then um, I just swatted her arm back. And then she brings in her boyfriend, and like he's like, Oh, I'm gonna kick your ass, and uh, yeah, nothing ever really came of it, but just. Yeah, just women, just they, they just do not, they just not like me. So. And then, like, you said you had hair and that you weren't fat. I know I was a skinny kid. I still, I still was up until you know maybe twenty something, late twenties maybe. But uh, yeah, I mean, when you're in high school, you're going to be skinny usually, and uh, you're going to have hair. Well, like, what kind of like high schooler were you? Like just like an uh, like a loner, or were you in the like the, the band? Yeah, yeah, I was a loner. Like my biggest fear, did, like at the start of the an school instrument? year, well, did you play an instrument, or were you did no. you excel in school at all? No. Or no, I was a loser. Now and and I'm not very smart. You, not, did you play video games? Like, there's something you did when you were like, a, like, a, like a, you know, in your youth. What, what what were you into? Yeah, we played the. I played video games like N64 and uh, PS1, uh, the original Nintendo. Uh, but I had six brothers and three sisters, and so you you always had to take turns. I mean, you might get an hour if you're lucky one day. So, now I never went to like an extracurricular activity, a, a football game. We our our football mascot was was rockets. Like I never went to one of them. Never never like I was I was kind of just like a wallflower basically. But I, I was mostly ignored most of the time. And then you know a few times here and there I'd get bullied or something. But most of the time I was just ignored. What 
what if what do you say to like people in the chat maybe say you're too sensitive like you're just a baby. oh i'm very sensitive i can't well, maybe, I, maybe I, you're just a baby like man up yeah, buddy boy yeah i was always very sensitive ever since i was a kid i mean like, you're you're grown man you're 40 years old what are you crying yeah. about yeah yeah i mean i, I, I mean what I, do you I, say to that dumb well i would <laughs> i would just say i agree i I don't know what you want me to say. I mean, I, I wore my heart on my sleeve most of my life or all my life. Like, I, I'll, you know, even when I was a kid, like, I would just cry. Like, uh, you know, if anyone even said anything negative, a little bit, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I just, I was always very sensitive. Um, and then when I drink, it just gets worse. So, I mean, I, I this is kind of helping me, uh, you know, kind of toughen up a little bit and seeing the way you, like Todd uh, handles things. Do you talk about the black pill with your brothers, Dumb? Now they're all like they got wives that lasted longer than three weeks. Like they're still married. Um, they had they all had kids. Uh, I mean, the, the, the youngest didn't. He he doesn't have any kids, but everybody else did. Uh, one of my sisters didn't. Uh, but now they um yeah because so so they're all married or or were married and they just they're just kind of like an army, I guess. And uh, they don't want to. They don't really. They don't really care about these things. So, and plus, we're not very your, close. Your anymore. brothers aren't worried about your well-being at all. No, no. I mean, I don't really call them either or text them either. I mean, we kind of just leave each other alone. Uh, I mean, Dom, you talk about how you're lonely. Like, why don't you be like a better brother? Like, call up your brother. Yeah, that that I, you I a lot of brothers. You said right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, goodness. I asked I asked the psychiatrist that about you know why is it that I'm so lonely and yet I'll push everybody away and I like I I just won't I you know I don't I don't try anymore and he's like well that's part of the disease you know depression I'm like well I guess that makes sense but yeah so on one hand I'm very lonely on the other hand uh, like there's I feel like that happens a lot like a lot of things in my life where like you know, like I want a woman and I don't and like I want to have friends and I don't and I want to yeah I don't know I I, I and it just depends. It depends on like what day, yeah, you know, how how I'm feeling or whatever. But like, I'm just so anxious and depressed most of the time. I just don't want to be around anybody. Uh, and especially normies like that. I mean, they got their kids and they got. Their, I mean, I can't really relate to to them. I relate to everybody on here much, much more. But no, I agree. Uh, I should. You know, like, I feel I, for you, dumb. Like I kind of relate to you, and and I'm not. I, and what I mean by that is, like I don't. Re I don't. Uh, like I don't identify or, or uh, relate to people my own age, yeah. Because because of like these, what do they call it? Right, rite of passage. As a man, you know, you you get married, you have kids, you you go to do Christmas stuff. Like like Christmas for me is like a casino or or an Asian restaurant, some drinks. You know, I used to. I I think the way I am now is because I just got pushed away by everybody, and so I just push back and just say the hell fuck them all. You know, like. I used to really like Christmas and I would just go all out and just, I would get everybody gifts and I would spend, you know, over a thousand dollars every year. And that was a lot, you know, well, the farther, farther you get back time, the more it was, it was worth, you know, but, um, you know, I'd wrap all the presents and I would have cards and I would, I would put all this effort in and, and I'd hardly ever get anything back. Like I, I know it's, that's really not dumb. You did the, you did all that. I did all that every year for a lot That's of years, brutal, and, bud. and then year after yeah, year of, of, of maybe getting a pack of socks. And I'm not I even mean, joking. Or, or like, dumb. I totally get it. Like you're you're investing into like society, the community, your your extended family. Yeah, and, and then like, I just what, gave up, and I was just what, like, no. Uh, but what did you get out of all that investment? What was the return? And I totally feel for you, man. Well, I did initially feel feel better, like feel good, like I. I it's just. Like being a workhorse for everybody else. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Like, why? Why should I be? Why am I doing this? Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, I was never like the life of the party. Like, like some of my family members are really liked. And, like, when they come through the door, like, everybody's like, hey, it's so and so, you know? And then when they leave, like, everybody, everybody goes away. And it's, like, I was never like that. Like, I just show up and they're like, oh, hey. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, it doesn't matter how hard I try. And, that, and that's why I say you stuff know, like that. You know, you know dumb. I, I actually love the fact that, like, I've come to, like, that, that I don't know how to say it. Like, I've reached that point in my life, dumb, where I don't, I don't bother. I don't want to say humiliate myself, but, like, 
bother with those situations anymore. Like, I'll just stay home. I'm nobody's gonna miss me anyway. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's why. Fuck? Yeah, that's why I stayed home this past year. I mean, why? Why even bother? So, I mean, that's why I say like, you know, you're born a loser, and you really are. I mean, you you, you know. Like I Todd always says, like the look this part, you know, like e- it even affects like other men. Where, you know, if you got that look, all the men like you, and if you don't, you know, um, you're you're just you're you're ridiculed. And that's not a hundred percent the other time. Like you know, like you know, um, you know, ugly dudes could be friends with each other, but um, yeah, but it's but it still affects it. And so like I don't know, a lot of my family, and extended family, like. Like I would go up to them like a you know family get-togethers and try to have a conversation and 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 you could just tell like the disdain on their face like they just didn't want nothing, nothing to do with me, um, and then and but then like the people they did like they'd be hanging around them all night you know, <laughs> so so y- you learn pretty quick. I mean I'm hard-headed, but I, I learned I learned after a while you know nobody likes me, you know, and so why I'm not gonna put myself through all this. I'm just gonna stay home and forget it. Do you not have any friends? I mean, you're you're forty. How, you don't have any friends. Um, I'll be forty three here in a four days or a few days. But uh, no. Uh, the, the only friends I had, well, uh, if you call them friends, was from work, and one guy still calls me. But like he was on stream already, and he just yaps and yaps and yaps. But you don't have like a buddy you grew up with that you keep in touch with? No. No, I had one friend in middle school. His name was Corey, and. Uh, uh and once we got in high school uh, you know ninth grade he he ignored me like like seriously he wouldn't even look in my direction and i didn't have a single friend in all of high school and uh and so yeah i never and then i never went to college so and then i went right to the workforce you had no so, friends no friends in high school nah now nah, it was a very lonely experience it was very um like i was always worried about sitting like who am I gonna sit with at lunch? You know that was like a big deal, like in the beginning of the school year, because I I had nobody, no, I had no friends. So why I, do you why do you think that is dumb that you had no friends in school? Well, you're you're like a Gen Xer, like an old millennial. Like this seems a little odd. Yeah, I'm one. I'm I'm one of the oldest millennials because if because February of of eighty one, and then they they you know the cutoff is January of eighty one. So yeah, I'm pretty. I I relate more to the Xers because so Todd would be an Xer and I'd be a millennial. That's stupid. We're, <laughs> We're six months apart. So, and then my one of my sisters, like, we're she was born in December '79, and she's an Xer, and I'm a millennial. So, yeah, I'm in that weird, weird um, cutoff there. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, dude. There was something about my face, I think, or 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 the way I act, or or something. Like some people are just instantly liked. Like you've experienced this, I'm sure. You know, some people just have charisma. They're just like, and other people just you no know, one likes them. And it's, it's sad, but it's just reality. And I unfortunately uh, fell into the later camp, and I just, I was just, um, yeah, just pretty much ignored. So, but that's better than being bullied or something, I guess. How did you find the black pill? Like, how did this happen? And I don't even really consider myself like a, a. I never talk about black pill stuff. I think it's stupid. I think the black pill, red pill, blue pill, whatever. Uh, I don't know. I don't really. I don't uh, really TFL, uh, loneliness. Yeah. Um, you know, so, uh, social isolation. Um, you know, it, you, we can label it anything you want. Inceltum. You know, being yeah. an incel. I'm um, not getting the uh, attention of a woman. You know, whatever. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I keep bringing up Todd, but uh, he's my hero. Uh, I mean, that. So I would Google. So I wouldn't even Google things. I would put it in the YouTube search. Like YouTube was everything. Like for the past what, since 2010 or something. So I'd put I'd put search terms in there, and, and eventually I came across Todd's stuff, and he just clicked with me. And then I I like I binge watched all his videos in like a couple of days. And uh, yeah, he's very relatable. And um, but he wasn't really. Black pill, I want to say either. Like he never really talked about that kind of stuff either. But just, yeah, just just realizing that there are other men like just like me out there. Like I, I never really met, and if I did meet other men like like me, like didn't they didn't want to talk about it? I guess because I I kind of thought I was alone in all this. So uh, yeah, it was it was through like YouTube and the um the search, yeah, open the search did bar. Did something happen to you, Dom, or did for you to want to search these terms or? 
Oh, I was just going through a depressive episode again, and like so, I would, you know, or anxiety or whatever I was going through, and uh, and I would just, I was trying to relate and I was trying to commiserate and and look for other people in my my situation. So maybe I put in like loneliness or something, or you know, I know I, I remember putting in depressed on wanted man just because that's what I was, that's what I felt like, and that's why I made the YouTube channel. That, um. Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, I was, I was just always depressed and anxious, and I don't. So I, I can't really say what I was going through except that, like, I'm always. It's always like a cycle of like I hardly ever feel good, and um, yeah, the most, the most is like I'm, I'm like I'm just, I'm just okay. So whatever, whatever I was going through at the time, I, I don't know. Um. Um, do you think maybe I don't know how to say this uh, like maybe that being unseen's not so bad like like being invisible's not the end of the world like you can kind of like go about life and no one's like I don't know you're not a you know yeah. you're not the center of attention you can enjoy your life and I mean why maybe are well, I don't know. I always felt like there's something missing. Like I, 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 like I always desired like a, a wife. Like when I was younger, like I, I kind of come to terms that, I mean, I did finally get married then for a few weeks. Um, but like I, I kind of always had that in my mind that I was going to get married and have kids and have a certain kind of life. And um, you know, dumb, dumb. I felt the same way. And by the way, dumb. I'm a little younger than you. I'm almost forty. I'm getting closer to. I'm getting close to forty. So I'm a little uh, younger than you. But you know, this provider role. Um, what is a man? A man's like a, a man up, uh, go to work, uh, provide. Um, like this, this kind of weird kind of, you know, generation where we're still like we're like old like like boomers like the yeah. idea that that we need to work hard to you know attract a woman and then provide for her that's like that's old thinking that's old world like it's well, the, world's changed, the, the world's changed before our, our within our lifetime and now all the women have like the better high status jobs and i don't know yeah. it's sort of i get it dumb like what is a man to do if he's not a provider or a protector of society? Yeah, what's your purpose? Yeah, exactly. what, what, what are we here for? And yeah, it's a it's a and dumb. I get it because I've listened to you for a while, dumb, and like I get it. Like you're you've worked all your life, like that's mm -hmm. what you, all you know. Like you are what you what you do, and you work, and I work, and it's sort of a weird thing dumb where we have to kind of adapt and realize that we don't need to work for society we don't need to work for women we just need to work for ourselves and yeah so i guess you shouldn't be sort of too freaked out like you don't have to take care of some like frumpy fat woman and like drive her to a, a medical office you know uh appointment like you all you got all you gotta worry about is you bud you got you got some money i'm sure you got a house like you there's nothing to worry about. You you don't have to take yeah. care of some fat, frumpy woman. You're good on you, man. Feminism's great, right? <laughs> I'm half kidding. I'm half kidding. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I agree. And, and on the surface, I it seems better. It seems like a better deal for us, except that, you know, if you Well, look it's like all me, you know. It's all we know. We were taught we have to, like, yeah. get a good job to get a girl. Well, that right. didn't work. What the fuck do we do now? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, what do you, what, yeah, what do you do? So, um, I kind of lost my train of thought here because you were young. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck do you do now? But yeah, so, uh, yeah, so I had boomer parents and like my dad, he still works to this day. He's 73. He just turned 73. And, um, uh, yeah, he taught us all to, to work very hard. And, um, and then like when we were growing up, like they always said, like, there's a, there's a, a lid for every pot, you know? So like basically, I think they're trying to tell me, yo, you know, you ain't you ain't the best like looking or 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 brightest mind, uh, but there's a lid for every pot. I think that's <laughs> I think that's what they were trying to tell me, except that it didn't work out like that, like not really. I mean, it wasn't until I was 38 where I finally got married and it, it yeah, that wasn't to a woman that I actually wanted to, and apparently she didn't want to get married to me either. Yeah, you know, take it off 
that fast. But um, yeah, like yeah. So so what's our purpose in life? I have no idea. I, I, and that's a, that's a, that that is a big anxiety because I, I do think about existential shit and I, I don't. Isn't it a little bit of a relief though? Like you don't have any. All you got to worry about is you, bud. Well, you would you would think that it, it yeah. So uh, you would think that, but uh, it's just not for some reason. Like whenever, like how do you have a fulfilling life? So, like, I watched out how many videos about this and read, read See, that's articles. The, that's, the, that's the conundrum. The, 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 that's the predicament. Like, how do you have a meaningful life? And that's the, at the end of the day, for a man, a meaningful life is meaningful work. Like, I know, and that, that's like, that's like a weird thing. Like, because that's not it anymore. Like, we're in this new world where women get value for what men do. And you're just well, side, and you're, you're just like a side character. You just support support a woman. Just help, and they help just, a woman out. Uh, yeah. And they just have intrinsic value. I, so, I, I guess what I'm saying, dumb, is like I understand that. Like you're you're 43 years old. Like that is what makes a man's life meaningful, a meaningful work. But that's not the world anymore. It's it's like what is what is a man to do when we're we're in like an old upload? Like the new people are they're going to be like uh, ready for the new world, but I, we're old hat, I guess. I, I, am I wrong? Well, I think, uh, well, like for myself personally, because um, of my issues, but also what we were just taught, what you just said that there's like, I think, I think I'm just going to just, I don't know. I, I I'm just going to live and, just do, just do whatever, just, you know, work as little as I, I have to. Like, there is no, there is no purpose. There is no point. There is, my life is meaningless. So, yeah, what do you replace taking care of a family and stuff with? I, I have, I have no idea. And it's a, it's, it's a real struggle. I mean, on one hand, like you said, you're right. We don't have to, like right now I'm unemployed and I'm fine. It's okay. I, I, I'm not anxious about that so much. I don't have anyone to take care of. I just got something wrong with me that I can't help, but, but like, there's no pressure on me, you know? So, yeah. So I might just wind up in an RV like golf grade was talking about and just go out to Arizona and, and just do fuck all. Is that until, better though? Dumb until I die. Well, no, it's not, but I don't know. Like, I don't want to stay here and have to mow the grass and fix the plumbing and do the, you know, d d I don't know. Would well, you rather have an apartment? I don't want to have to do anything. I don't want to have to. I'm tired. I'm tired of, of doing stuff. So I, I like. I don't want to take care of shit. I wish I didn't have anything really, but except you know, you need some kind of abode. You know, you wouldn't need... be living in the middle of nowhere with like sexless men be kind of weird and boring and not fun? Uh, well, I guess it is more fun with women, isn't it? Like that's why I got, that's why I like to have women in the chat. Um, but off -grid I don't know. We're journey. trying to uh, this off grid. I'm um, going yeah. going off grid. Uh, it's not the end. It's not totally retarded. But without a woman, why do it? I'm sorry. Like yeah, without, like without a woman, why go live in like some I don't know. Uh, well, with, without a woman, why do anything? So like yeah, it would be so much better if you, if you could have a, a woman who wasn't 300 pounds and and actually liked you and. You could live life together. It didn't matter what you did. I mean, there's some that do that. You know, they live in an RV and they travel around. Or and it doesn't matter what they do. They can live in a tent, you know, but they're together. You know, but but if you don't have that, yeah, you're just on your own and you're just trying to figure out what to do until you die. Uh, you know, and then you know you just distract yourself. And it it it's not a nice life, but you know what do you do? you're just coping like everybody always says and you're just distracting yourself from the reality and and at the end of the day at the end of my life like it ain't my fault like i i used to blame myself for everything and now i'm not and now people probably think i'm just making excuses but now i'm i, I don't i don't give a shit like if i do get a deathbed it ain't my fault i never had kids it ain't my fault that you know shit didn't work out and i uh, wound up in the desert you know whatever um it's kind of it was kind of just forced on me and and uh you know, I'm just trying to make the best of it. So, um, dumb. What if someone said maybe you picked your situation, that it's maybe preferable to for your life, that you you're not 
you wouldn't actually want to be, you know, married and have a family. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess it's the, I guess the, the criticism, I guess, is is kind of valid in a way. Like, okay, so my wife, ex-wife, so okay, so like, if I would have, I don't know, maybe do you, miss, do you miss her at all? Uh, I used to. I cried a lot back in the day. Like it's been five years, over five years now, and like I, I think the biggest hit was that we made all these plans, like that were just shattered as soon as she left. Like you know, and I, I put her on my medical insurance, a dental, and I was gonna adopt her kid that she had, and I made all these sacrifices, like marrying a woman with a kid, which I never wanted to do, and getting a king size bed which sat out there and got ruined because i was just terribly depressed and didn't feel like bringing it in and um and i was gonna put like a play set out out back for for the kid and we we're gonna have our own and have a family you know and then she just freaking leaves and uh, it was it was it was very depressing uh but i mean i don't miss her anymore i mean she to me she treated me terribly she didn't give me a chance at all and i mean okay so maybe if i would have kissed her feet and like begged her to stay or something i but to me i just i was like if you that's what i told her i said if you want to leave leave and maybe that's cold-hearted i don't know maybe i should have been more sensitive or something but i think the guys i was listening to back then kind of like like i kind of i kind of took their advice about that but i, I don't really regret say, saying that you know like you kind of got to stand your ground as a man right I mean, it, what, what was it? so? I, you know, like every time she was going to throw a tan tantrum, I was, I was supposed to like, you know, kiss her ass, and I, I don't know. I, I just, I just gave her all ultimatum, and and she decided to leave, and you know, and here so, I am uh, alone. What do you again. think, or what do you say to like young people? Like, you're just a baby. Like, you have, you actually got married. You've had sex before. Like yeah. the young people have it way tougher than you. You need to like. Well, I was 38 when I got married, or 37 when I got married, and um, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, but I, I, I believe me, I, I was trying, like, and it just, it just took that long, and, um, but I mean, the older you get, the more chances you have, right, just by living day, day by day, and so eventually, uh, I was able to, but yeah, it's never going to happen again, I'm never going to get married again, um, just, it's just not, I, I just don't think it's going to happen, but. Yeah, I mean, they can call me a baby. I know I'm, I'm overly emotional, and I did have these technically these experiences, even though as short lived as it was. And then, like sex, like I never had regular sex. Like it was always few and far between. I mean, th for the few weeks I was married, like I was just working. Like people don't understand how much I worked. I don't think. Like unless you were like me, you don't you don't know like working 14, 15 hours a day plus the commute. You're you're, you're going home, you're having a drink, you're sleeping, you're waking up and you're repeating that day after day after day after day. So we had sex a handful of times, but it's not, you know, I, I'm not, I was never really like a normal kind of married, married life. And, and I didn't have enough time to be, you know, to, to be like a, like a husband and a father and all like that. So yeah, you can call me names. I toughened up. It's fine. I mean, I am a baby in a lot of ways. I wish I wasn't. Do you miss being married, Dom? Well, again, it was three weeks. I I, I really don't. I, I barely got a taste of it. I mean, I, I like this woman just didn't like me. Like when we got married, I was the one with tears in my eyes, not her. You know, like I, like you know, so like I'm the sentimental one. I'm the I'm the emotional one, and like she just not. And I know I was kind of, you know, mean. I guess for not for just telling her to leave if she wanted to, but um. I, I, do I miss, see, like, I, I was only a few weeks, I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know, I came home, I, I mean, I worked, and I came home and slept, and I left, like, I, I don't even know what it's like to be married, really, I really don't, we never went on a date, like, I, I don't know, like, I, basically, you know, the marriage, like, from what I, like, the basic marriage part was, like, in Hawaii for, for the, for the week. Yeah, and then we were together all the time and slept in the same bed and stuff. But like when she was here, like all I had was a twin bed, so she slept in it. I slept on the couch because that's all I had. I, I was a single man, you know. I had the bed on order, but she left before it came. So like I, I don't really, yeah, I don't really, I don't really know what it's like, really. But I think I would like it. 
given more time and given more given more how opportunity. Did, how did you meet her? Uh, my sister, one of my sisters, uh, worked with her, and um, and this was back. But this is this was in um. Uh, so this is when I was twenty nine. So how long ago was that? Uh, well, anyway. Uh, yeah. So she was working with my sister at a restaurant, and then uh, when she set us up, and I was like, "Well, I don't care what she looks like as long as she ain't fat." And ba- <laughs> so, uh, so you, back. To- uh, Dom, do you blame men being single because women are fat? Well, a lot, a lot of it, yes. Now, see, I get criticism because I call them fat when I am, but the the issue is, is that like I wasn't most of my life, and it's just I kind of gave up. But um, so back when I said when I told my sister that, I was like, well, as long as she ain't fat, I'll go out with her. Um, yeah, I, I was skinny. Like I, I, we just don't like fat women, and so yes, yeah, so I kind of went on a tantrum one time on YouTube about about the fat women about just put down the fucking goddamn fork because they are kind of ruining the dating market because we're all going after the skinny women and 75% of the women in America are fat. And so we're all going after the minority and then they get pigheaded and they get the, the choice of the litter. They're not picking me. They're not picking, you know, mo- you know, so I think if all the women were skinny, it would level the playing field and we'd have more opportunities and more choices. And we'd go a- after different women because my wife wasn't attractive, but she was skinny. That, that's all I wanted. And then people, people like I, I, the one guy at work, I, I told him that, and then he told his wife that, and she said, "Good luck," because she saw a picture of me. Good, good luck. I can't even have that standard. So you know, yeah. So women just don't—they just don't want to lose weight. They just want to do whatever they want, and then we're supposed to accept it. But then I gotta go get muscles and work all the time, and I gotta do all these things, and we gotta be six feet tall and get hair transplants and all. It's just horseshit. So yeah, they need to lose some goddamn weight. <laughs> yeah bro they do <laughs> they're all fat yeah everybody's fat i hate fat people yeah it's disgusting it's so and and yeah and i hate myself right, for being know. fat like I, I hate myself for you know i get i get that we have mental issues and stuff and, and women got a lot of mental issues but um and and a lot of it isn't their fault it ain't my fault like a lot of it a lot of it is just the, the food that's out there right i mean you know, we pick the wrong foods that we, we pick all the tasty stuff because they, they make these foods that, you know, that taste really good and they're they're addictive. And, and, you know, like nobody gets addicted to salad, but, you know, we'll get cheeseburgers and French fries and pizza and stuff. And we'll just ever eat, ever eat that because they, they made it that way. They made it high fat, high salt. They made it tasty. You know, and so we all overeat. So, I mean, we get set up. But the point still is, is that we should have more self-control. So. And I'm working on that. I'm hopeful. Hopefully, I'll be under 200 at some point here. I don't know. But uh, and then I fall into the trap of I need to eat something so I feel better. Yeah, you know, I fall into that trap all the time because I always have, I always think of dying all the time and I have issues. And so I think if I eat something, that'll and it never works. So I don't know why I keep doing it. Tom, uh, what are your thoughts about men's needs never being considered? Um, we've heard about women, you know, they have their periods, there's excuses, there's postpartum depression. Um, we have ways to, you know, um, excuse or dismiss um, duty from women. Um, and that's not applied to men at all. What are your thoughts about that? Uh, so there's no help for men? Is that... Is that- I don't know. Society's... Your thoughts about you know men's needs not being considered. Um, that we have our own like you know hormonal imbalances, our own um, needs. Um, men society just plight, doesn't care. Men's plights not considered. Uh, what what are your thoughts of that, about that, Dom? Yeah, society doesn't care. And what is society made up of? It, it's you and me, and it's all the women, and it's all the men, right? And. <laughs> You know, it's not like it's 50 50 where, where the women are on one side and we're on the other, and we can all have our, our issues addressed. It, most of the men hate other men, and we're all in competition with each other or some stupid thing, and they don't really give a shit about us. They, they're all simping or whatever. They're all taken up for their wives and their girlfriends and their little princess daughter, and um, they just don't give a fuck about another man. And so I don't think anything's ever going to change because we all. 
you know, everything's geared for, toward, towards women. It's just going to get worse because more and more women are running things and they're in Congress. And, you know, before you know it, we'll have a female president. And, um, and, and this biological sense, like I'm not the only one who said, you know, you know, the, there's less eggs than there is sperm. I mean, you, you need one man to impregnate a hundred women. So we're just not needed today when you have all this technology and all this automation and all this, you know, yeah, you know, social security stuff, you know, this welfare, you know, we're, a man's not needed. They don't care about us. Are your brothers like, like normies or are they chads or are they, are they just like beta bucks? Like, I would consider, like, it's hard for me to tell. Like, I go light on looks with men. Like, I mean, go easy. Like, I don't, I, I could tell if you're really ugly or if you're really handsome. So, I don't think any of them are really handsome. I don't think none of them are Chad. Like, I don't think, but I don't think any of them are really ugly either. Uh, so I, I don't, it's hard for me to tell. Like my sisters are attractive. I could tell like people might think like, ew, but, but they're, they, they were attractive. But as far as my brothers and sisters, like, I, or as far, as far as my brothers, like a lot of them struggled to get wives like I did. And, um, you know, and they're not, they're not particularly attractive wives. So, I mean, based on that, if you base your appearance on what you can get, like my wife is like a three, you know, so I was probably a three or less. So, I mean, like one of my brothers, he's married to like a really large woman. <laughs> and so, so anyway, I'm not like, do you, I'm, not uh, jealous, I'm not jealous of any of these. Uh, do, you, do you envy your brother's life compared to your own? No, no. So, so yeah, none of them married Stacy. Um, one of my brothers did have a short term relationship with the Stacy and I was very jealous. Um, but, but of course, you know, Stacy's don't stick around and they, he, she went to somebody else and he married. A, I'm not going to lie. Dumb. My, 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 younger, my younger brother was smashing some hotties in the back when we were kids. Like, God, I was jealous. My, my yeah. younger, my younger quote, uglier ginger brother was getting some good action when we were like 16. I was like, Oh my God. Yeah, I was fucking sucks. jealous, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the, that, that's a sibling rivalry where like, you know, they have friends or they have a girlfriend, you don't. And it's like, what's wrong with you? And why, you know, yeah, all that comes up and yeah, it, yeah, it sucks. And, um, yeah, I have some subscribers like that. Like, like Rob is one of them. Did you feel and pressure he, from your parents, Dom, about having a, uh, children and, and being like, no, a... I, I think, okay. I think everybody knew my potential. So like in high school, no one, no teacher ever pushed me to go to college. They, they knew I was stupid or whatever. And I got low grades and they just, you know, I guess they figured I'd do a trade or something. And same thing with my parents. Like they knew, they knew, you know, they can look at me and they can just, you know, you, you know, they, they could just see that I was not that kind of material. And, um, I don't, I, I just think they didn't push me to do anything because, uh, there wasn't, there wasn't any point. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, no, they never pushed me to get married or go to the army or do any kind of a job or go to college or anything. I didn't get any support. I really made that's a negative thing. Cause I didn't get any support to, or direction or, or nothing. I was just out there flailing around, you know, try, trying to figure out what to do. So, uh, yeah. Do you miss know. do you miss driving truck, Dom? I'll never miss driving a truck. It's very it was very stressful for me. Um, you know, the added cameras that are always staring at you inside and out. And so I can't have like a cigarette while I'm on the road. Depends what company you work for. Um, some companies don't want you smoking in their truck, and the camera can detect if you are smoking. It will actually go off because you are smoking. It goes off when we were drinking or eating some chips. It would and um, just being constantly surveilled. That is so fucking bullshit. You can't even yeah. have a bag of Lay's potato chips without the man fucking yeah. I I all I, seen I. Yeah, Fuck. so oh, yeah, so okay. it's always go. It's I always don't recording. understand it, dumb. I don't know why guys drive fucking trucks for a living. Like I thought about it, but why? Why they pay well, like it, they don't pay enough. Well, you it be does give me like fucking stupid money like i better be living better than your average person and that's just not the case yeah, yeah like the over the road guys like the guys sleeping in their trucks like the, with the bigger trucks than when i was driving because i was driving the smaller ones that doesn't have any kind of a back um so those guys 
they're always on the road. They're always dealing with traffic and weather and the cops and the DOT and, and tire blowouts and, and, and the clock. You're, 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 you're always, you know, you're, you're always stressed about getting there on time. If you're going to hit traffic, get, you know, you're, um, you know what you know, bothers you, me you, about you, all this? You got stuff? a, cl- you no, got a 14. Yeah. No, you know what bothers me about all this? Hmm. Like I got to wash my own socks and underwear and like, prepare my own meals and my own lunches and i've got to pay all the bills and like i don't have a family i don't have a wife yeah like why i have to, I have to like do everything like you have to do it all you got to do get the mail you got to take the garbage down you got to get yeah exactly. you gotta do all the laundry you gotta you gotta go grocery shopping you gotta get the, the the dish soap or the fucking toilet paper there's like it's like i'm doing everything and for what yeah. Like that's kind of my I I I I I relate to you, dumb. I, I and I'm not maybe as much of a failure or as much of a I, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm the same or or worse or better off. I don't know. It doesn't matter. The mm-hmm. point is, is like us as men, working class men, we do everything. You know, you you might be 19 and say, oh well, you you put it put in your time there, little you know, but little buddy, buddy boyo, put in your 10 years of service, and then by the time you that's what bothers me so much dumb about these spaces is the red pill that you're going to peak when you become 40 and that you're going to yeah. be this desirable man and you'll have all this status. It's such a fucking lie. And, and I believe, I believe that like, cause I was listening to some of this stuff. Uh, wait right your around, turn, buddy boy. Oh, just yeah. wait your turn. Yeah. Right around 30. I was listening to some of that and I really thought, oh, okay, uh, now's my time. And nope. <laughs> now it wasn't. It wasn't my time. I'm balding. I'm getting fatter. You know, um, I already picked my, picked myself. Like, why, why would we think that you know the older we get, and then we're supposed to be able to get an 18 year old Stacy or something when we're 30? Come on, bro. Um, but no, I agree with you. So like, I was when I had my panic attack out here the other day. I, I called my neighbor. I do have her number, and she came over, and it was just comforting having someone else there. I was laying on the front porch, but. Yeah, I was crying and I was like, it, it's so fucking hard. I got to do everything. I got to do everything. And I was just like in a, in a panic. And, and so, yeah, I agree. Like it, it's the stress of just everyday life, even though I'm not even working right now. Like everything's up to me. And then everybody wants to bitch like I don't have a clean house. Well, fuck you. I, I can't. OK, I got the time now, but I don't have the mental faculty or whatever it takes to fucking goddamn do it. It's like households run on two people. Yeah, that's the way it used to be. It used to be, I would go to work, do my nine to five, come home, the house would be clean, and she would have got the groceries, and she did the errands, and made the doctor appointments or whatever, and I made sure I went to the doctor whenever you know. But now, now we got to do everything. It sucks. It's very, and it's very, very stressful. I can't. Well, I can't I, no, it. I kind of, and I relate to you, dumb, because I have, I live in a house, and I don't have a family. Like, I don't want to mow the grass and take the trash out and do all this bullshit, yeah. like, and then do my own laundry and. Like I got a, I got a roommate. His mom like makes some lunches for his work. Like God, even just that would be helpful. Like, yeah, because then that shows mom, that someone cares about you and stuff. Yeah, yeah. like somebody's like you know uh, putting care into your lunch. He's, he's he's got a nice lunch every day. Like God, that's nice. Like women, you're just hey, not healthy. Get, you're not going to get that from a woman, unfortunately. No, yeah, like like if we had women here like with us who who would who would look after us like that, we would live longer, we'd be healthier. Hell, I might not be having any anxiety issues because I would get the healthy food. Like I I'm just a, I'm just a fucking retard. I don't know why, but like so like I did go out to the grocery store and I bought salads finally and I, I bought like sliced up apples and carrots and stuff. But like you know, like if she was here to cut the stuff up and to to prepare it and then you know like. It would, I was never like one to do all that. I would just order a pizza. But if, if someone who, who actually loved me, who was living here with me, who wanted to who see, to see the best for me, see my cholesterol go down and my blood pressure or whatever, and see that I eat eat right, yeah, I mean, I mean, that that would be that would be like a dream. And then she would, and in return, she wouldn't have to worry about the bills, you know, the car payment, you know. I would take care of all that. Yeah, it's, just... it's it's weird though dumb because like what else are we gonna do like i hate to say it like the best spot is probably your house like why why would you getting in an apartment is probably going to cost you more money and you'll have oh no, no it is i no that's why i wanted it's to like do you're the... stuck it sucks 
Yeah, that's why I wanted to do the RV thing. So like, so yeah, so the off grid channel. So he, uh, so yeah, so he has he has this plan of like having like a piece of property out there that's cheap, and then he you know he could bring all this you know lost boys you know all, all, all the unwanted men out there, and then now I know you're poo pooing on that, and other other men think it's a stupid idea. Others think it's good, but at least you want to be lonely. But but it would, it'd be cheap living, and like so. If I sold everything, cashed out my 401k, and I had this lump of money, maybe I could make it last until I died or or got retirement. I don't know, but like it's twenty five bucks a month if you don't have your own piece of land, like a quartz site. You know, it's twenty five dollars a month to live in the um, you know, the certain long term parking areas, and then that's your water, your sewage, your trash for twenty five bucks. So you know, you spend ten grand on a on an RV trailer. And maybe your hundred thousand can last. Uh, uh, I don't know. And then if you get free food, I don't really know what to do. That's just that's just 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 the thinking something that I'm thinking of and he's thinking of. But I like I don't really I don't know what to do because I can't I can't get back to trucking. Uh, you know the, the couple jobs I applied to never called me. I mean, I don't, I don't I don't really know what to do. And and like the local jobs like where I can walk to like Dollar General they don't pay anything. So and I can't get disability because I'm not doing. Like they don't consider me 100 percent disabled now. How people, long do you get unemployment? Uh, no, well, I I am on unemployment, but they haven't approved me yet. Like this is just my fucking luck. So yeah, it's been almost like 10 weeks now, and they still haven't approved it. It's still active. I've still got to go on the website every week. In fact, I did that just before I came on here. And um, but like as far as the disability goes, like it, you gotta. You got to listen to the doctors, take their Jew pills, and you got to not drink, and you got to go to therapy. You got to go to the psychiatrist. You, if you don't do all these things, uh, they're not going to, you know, they want to throw pills at you, so you go back to work. They don't want to put you on disability. So for me to to get this, I got to do, and I already tried all the pills. I already, I already tried therapy. It doesn't work, and so I stopped doing it, and then, you know, so... You know, it's just it's just hard. It's just it seems like it's very hard to get on it. But others have been trying to tell me to to go for it. I mean, maybe maybe you know maybe that's a lifeline they throw at me. Maybe, but I, I doubt it. I mean, that that'd be nice. You know, just living on disability and and and, and you know. So you don't football. even know if you're going to get unemployment. No idea. They still haven't. Uh, they, uh, again, like it. I just get shit on. So like, even when I had disability. I got two hundred dollars a week, you know, with the taxes and then minus taxes, so it was less than that. Like, if I was office staff, I was bitching about this the other day on my channel. You know, if I was the office staff, I would get—I can't remember if it was eighty percent or a hundred percent. It was something like that. It was almost a hundred percent of your of your salary if you're if you were if you're on you know if you were disabled uh, through through their insurance program, and the driver's two hundred. I mean, that just shows you right there who they actually give a shit about. And so, but, um, it, it's, it's, I, I just got, I don't know. I just got terrible luck and, and it's just the way my life is. <laughs> I don't get lucky and get unemployment like off grid did in, in a week. No, nah, it's been 10 weeks. I still don't get it. And then like, it's hard for me to do certain things. Like it might not make any sense to people and it doesn't make any sense to me. Like I could come on here and talk to you to make a phone call. Very difficult. You know, like I can't, it's hard to call for pizza. So I'll use the online app to order it. So I don't have to talk to anybody. Dumb, you know? dumb. Let's stop for a second. Don't, yeah. you're, you're sounding a little, this is like hyperbolic. You can't call up and order a pizza. No, you can, you know, like there's a lot of people who, who, like I was trying to tell my neighbors about things. Like, you know, it's hard to take the trash out or check the mail. Like, unless you got like the severe depression or something, like you really don't get it. Like I, 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 I don't, I don't, you know, you know fault, um, maybe you're not confrontational enough. Like I don't fault you or anybody else. Like it's hard like, Tom, Tom, from the maybe, outside looking. Maybe you're not confr confrontational enough. Like, well, I do. Being, I do hate confrontation. I, I do like hate that. Being uh, being more hardened. Like nobody, like, nobody's looking after you, dumb. Like exactly. Destroy so your like, enemies. So like, like the unemployment office. Like I need to call them and ask them what the fuck is going on, but I don't want to do it. Um. You know, there's a lot of things I need to do that I just can't seem to do it. I don't know why. There's something, some kind of mental block that I just can't. Um, it's just, it's can, just dumb, dumb. I'm convinced you can order a pizza. 
Uh, no, I can. It's just I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to call him. And, and and so and it was even worse when I was younger. Well, where I, I, girl, I couldn't. Like, and I wouldn't. Pretty, what if a pretty girl answers the phone? Like, wouldn't you want to? You know, I mean, you, you, no, there's yeah. no pretty girl that ever called me like ever in my life. No, when you order a pizza. Oh yeah, there was a cute girl down there at the Ochoa is the the local pizza shop down here. Yeah, she was like half Mexican or something. Um, but she's like twenty. So <laughs> now I, dude, I don't know. I don't get it either. I, I really, I really don't. I don't know why I, I can't answer emails. I got a ton of emails that that I, I, I YouTube comments that. Okay, I can read the live comments. I can't. It's very hard. It's not that I can't. It's very hard for me to go in there on the comments. Dude, and then, dumb, and, dumb. And then once in a while, I get brave enough to do it, and then I'll do them all in a row. But um, just some things are hard, very hard, and I don't want to do things. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Don't, don't let the comments in YouTube like bother you. People people put comments in my YouTube. Well, the, well, people, that's just the thing. Put comments in my YouTube all the time that are negative or they like want to talk shit. Like, let them talk shit. Who gives a fuck? That's the thing. They're all very supportive. Like, I hardly ever get a bad comment. It's just, I don't know what it is. I don't, I don't know what it is. And that's how retarded I am. I mean, people I think I'm a loudmouth idiot. I don't give a shit. Fuck them. Yeah. Well, I don't think that of you. So. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, I got issues, and and the problem. So I just got to learn to live with it because what I'm what I'm learning is the pills don't work, and therapy doesn't work, and there's nothing they can do. So it's kind of like li living dumb. with cancer. Dumb. What What do you say to like, bro? Just just sleep. Get 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 good sleep. Get get yourself some discipline in your life. Wake up at a certain time every day. You know, you set your alarm clock. You know, have some discipline in your life. Um, you know, this idea that, uh, I, you know, having regiment, um, you know, get exercise, eat healthy, have a have some socialization, call your mother, call your brother, um, maybe spend time with your nephew, get some sleep, eat healthy, exercise. Is this not is this not making sense, Dom? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um... some fucking pills. You know, you know, quit all this fucking like, uh, what do they call it? Shortcuts to success. You know, you know, uh, you, you watch like some ad on TV, you take a pill to lose weight. That's not how it works. You know this, right, Dom? Yeah. Yeah. So like I, so like I was walking like five miles a day when I was working and, and, and then, and then I like collapsed on the sidewalk. Like I, I thought I was dying or something. Um, like I, I try and I try and I, I do, I do. I do. I have a weight. Let um, I have a set of barbells in the basement. I build a squat cage, and it's hard. It's it's like and now I have a fear of that because last time I did, I had a bunch of heart palpitations. It's just I know it might sound like I'm making excuses or whatever, but like I'm just not normal. Like I can't just. I, when I walked back from the Dollar General that one day, I I I, I felt like I was dying. I, I had to fall on the on the grass and and, and calm down. I mean, I'm just not, there's something fucking wrong with me. Like I got exercise anxiety too. And, uh, it's just, it's just, um, it's just not as easy as just exercise or just, you know, even taking a shower sometimes. Like I just can't, sometimes I just can't do it. And it's just, that's just the mental fuckness that I have. I, I um, it's, it's just, I, I try to overcome it. I do. And I'm going to try to get back to walking again. And then, and I, uh, I did buy salads and I'm, I'm trying, you know, but, and then, and then trying to stay consistent, you know, that's always a big problem. But, um, you know, like when your body is like rejecting whatever you're doing and, uh, I couldn't even eat a pizza. I know I over, over ate the pizza the other day, but after I ate the pizza, I, I was on the floor thinking I was dying. I mean, it, it I, it, it's just like everything I do or don't do, like it just, it just fucks with my body and I can't, uh, I just. I want to say this. Dumb. I'm not. I'm not a normal person. I want to say this, dumb. Into relation to what you're saying, like, I don't know, bro. Like, I get what you're saying a little bit, and I, I, what I mean by that is, you reach a certain point in your life, you think it's fucking over. Like, yeah. I'm old. I'm. I'm like I'm middle aged. I'm. I'm gonna be forty in a couple years or whatever. Like, I'm old. I got health problems. And it's My like your health. Good. Every, everything is. It's there's nothing's on the uptick. It's all on the downtick. No. 
like your your looks your what weight, do you guys look forward health. to? You got social security, maybe you look forward to. And then, you know, he, and then on top of that, society's just worships women, doesn't care about men. I mean, America loves homosexuals and black people. It's crazy. Like white guys are just like, what do I do? You know, it, you, you as a white guy over middle age, you you don't have a family. Your country hates you. It's full of homosexuals and diversity. You can't say anything uh, politically incorrect, or yeah. you're you're being pigeonholed. It's just a mess. It's it's yeah. Really we're fun. we're we're really reviled, aren't we? Uh, yeah, I think we're the most hated hated group in in the country. And then and then people you can you can Google that as well. Um, white people are the most hated. Uh, you know, it's just um, yes. Yeah, so what do you? Yeah, uh, no wonder we all have mental issues, right? I mean, what do you what do you what do you what do you do? I mean, this this country used to be for us, and now now it's not. And you know, you can was go it to, I don't think it was ever. That was sort of uh, a myth. Well, I mean, you can go to China. When any all, country has, time. when any country has solid demographics, you can kind of feel that way. You can have that that sense. You can have that maybe sense, but not anymore. Like you know, be, because of the demographics being so solid, rock solid. I wouldn't say the the average working class China Chinaman would be pro China, uh, yeah. even though it, uh, maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong about that. But well, yeah, they want to be pro CCP. I don't think. I mean, publicly, they, of course, they would be. They would have to be. But uh, no, but so so now I was just gonna say like the like the, the like most of the countries like they're allowed to be all black or all Asian or, or whatever, and then and then we we're we're not because you know we're we're called racist if if we're not you know ninety ninety percent black or whatever you know we're we're so white yeah just white people for whatever reason and some people think it's because we don't make good slaves or something I mean that, that that could be it but for whatever reason the New World Order uh, they decided that white people must go. And uh, you notice all the white countries are getting invaded. Um, and and then people say that, well, that's because of the economics. I don't think so. Uh, that, you know, that I think there's a lot more to it than that. But and, and I would gladly go down to Chile or Ecuador or whatever. I don't, and then, you know, because most most of the immigrants no, no, I are, like your skepticism. You know, you question Christianity. You question the narrative. You're you're, you're just you're not really maybe reading too much on this. You're not looking too much into well, it because they, they, they're always lying to us. But you have like a good yeah, yeah. good. You have a good insight like it's or a good intuition, a good right. feeling on this. Like, wait how about this one? How about this one? Hitler. Hitler was actually the good guy. <laughs> Hit. His, yeah, they, they made his they made Hitler into the bad guy because he went against the New World Order, the financial uh, gurus of the time, you know, whoever, you know, the, the oligarchs, uh, uh, and uh, and they 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 made Hitler the um, uh, the the, the uh, genocidal uh, maniac that you know that we all know him to be right now, uh, and, and and perhaps he wasn't, and perhaps we were the bad guy. Uh, so you know, yeah, I like to think about stuff like that. Dumb, uh... I'm curious, like I, this is just off the off subject, but how is the trucking industry uh, nowadays when, as far as demographics? Uh, do white do white men drive trucks these days still? Yeah, there's a lot of white guys who drive trucks. It's just it's increasingly uh, women, and like that. Like when I started, and women was, really women yeah. drive trucks. Oh yeah, there's a lot of them. So when I started, it must and, be like frumpier than hell, just fat, frumpy, like cackling oh, yeah. ends. Yeah, a lot of them. A lot of them are. There's, 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 you know, there's, it's probably like the demographics, like maybe three quarters of them are fat and a quarter aren't. But when I started in 01, like there weren't that many female, like it was rare to come across a female truck driver. And that's because it was a lot harder to drive. And they made it easy with automatic transmissions and um, this power steering. You know, there's no clutch you have to stand on. Like some of these old clutches that I had to drive, you had to, you had to use your whole body weight to freaking, you know, and you were just doing it constantly all day long. And yeah, so they just made it easier, easier entry. And so, um, and, and then there's a lot of foreigners. Like they'll, they'll have visas for foreigners to come to the country specifically to drive trucks, just so they don't have to increase their wages here for American drivers. And uh, how do you so, feel about that? Like, I, is it safe? Is it safe, dumb, to have all these like non-white immigrant employees driving semi trucks full of 40,000 pounds. Uh yeah, a lot of them can't read English. That's a big problem. And uh you know, there, there's a lot of them that um aren't good at backing. They're, they don't really have the skills. They just a company sponsors them to come over. They 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 run them through the course, they, you know, they do enough to pass the CDL and they throw them out there. 
Um, but again, they're changing everything. So now they got all the safety stuff. So if if one of these stupid drivers, um, you know, falls asleep or something, they got these automatic braking stuff now. You know, the the the, the radar and the you you can you know and it'll, and it'll keep you in the lane. You can almost fall asleep and then one of them freak with the with the newer the brand new trucks. You know, and same with thing with the cars. You know, they got the automatic braking and stuff. It's just uh that stuff isn't foolproof because the radar sees shit it doesn't. It slams on the brakes when it shouldn't. Or, or vice versa. But, um, yeah, they're, they're just making it. And eventually it's going to be, you know, self-driven trucks. And do you, you think know, that's, do you think that's in, in the, oh, yeah. in the next 10, 20 years? Really? Oh yeah. They got them right now. They, they, you know, do you the think it's really like, feasible though. You know, like I actually think, implementing this system's actually going to work out. I don't know, but I think, I think for interstate driving where there's no, um, it's not complicated. Uh, I think so. A lot of the interstate stuff will go away first. Like I don't know the time frame, the time frame on this. I just know for my twenty years in there, when I started, the basic truck with the with the trend, you know, the, the manual transmission, no safety. Like from till 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 now, with all the stuff I just said, all the, I mean, really. So who knows? Maybe another twenty years, you know, there will be no truck drivers. But I mean, it's hard for us to imagine. Like, how do they navigate these city streets? And, and stuff. like, I don't know. I'm not a smart engineer person. And who's gonna fill it up with gas or diesel or whatever, or, or, or plug it into the electric thing, whatever they do? I guess they're gonna have to have employees to do that kind of stuff. But um, as far as like the interstate driving, they, yeah, I, I, yeah, they're not gonna need any of us. Yeah, and then it begs the question of you know what what is it that we, I mean? So men aren't even needed as it is now. So what you know, what are we all gonna be doing? In, in, in 20 years i mean i, I might be dead who knows because you know but um yeah yeah what, what job are you going to be doing uh you know i mean yeah, so, I, I'm, it, I just don't see it as realistic like there's just too many x factors right uh yeah i mean they, they i mean you can you can do some googling i mean it is it is a um it is a, a, a thing. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't I don't know exactly. They just got a lot of cameras on it. They got all the safety shit. I don't somehow it works. I don't I mean maybe I don't know for how many I years. It as I, a mean, very, I see it as like a largely white profession that's been completely diminished and greatly reduced in staining a, a status and standard. Um you know, it's like all these positions. They've been coming after the police the last ten years. the, the police force was a you know, another, another institution that was largely white and, you know, it's like they're, they've really, uh, eroded these, these sort of, uh, what do they call it? Uh, you know, these, these institutions, you know, that yeah. were largely very white and government I've seen it firsthand. Um, like just all the, all the immigrant truck drivers and, and went and old women like this, how, I just wonder how the hell does Walmart have the stuff in the store? Like, how is this whole thing holding up? And it doesn't seem like it's a workable model in the future. Like, I don't know. Uh, you yeah, know, I think they're how, just how are they going to keep the, how are they going to keep the store shelves stocked? I, I don't see it with the way that the way things are going. Yeah, I think they're just propping everything up, and you know they got you know the computers and stuff where they're able to manipulate everything and so they're they're propping everything up right now but when they you know whenever they want the cards to, to fall that's when they're gonna hit the button and make it all collapse and i have to way. imagine dumb they're they're hurting for like truck drivers who wants to drive a truck you get you get fucking shitty hours you get treated like shit yeah, you don't even yeah. get that, you don't even make that much money now nah, if you like i made good money but i work two jobs and and two like it it does depend on like what account you're on and like what company you work for. But basically, if you look at it at a large, if you look at it, you know, yeah, just the over, you know, they'll get paid pennies a mile. And yeah, you got it. They'll fire you for anything. You know, you scratch the truck, you know, you're late, you know, one too many times, you know, whatever. It, they act like they need drivers all the time, but they fire everybody and everybody quits and um, they just, they just want the cheapest. I just want to right mention uh, JB Vance. Aaron Clary has a book out, A World Without Men. Women don't do the necessary jobs to upkeep the infrastructure. I just think they're going to make it work. Like, yeah, I heard about like, that. I just, about Aaron Clary's just wrong. Like, this system's not going to just fall apart tomorrow. I think they can kind of keep this, this kind of chugging along for a while. For yeah, a long I, I, while. Think, I think so too, until they wanted to. 
Until he wants to collapse whenever that like, is. Oh, all oh, women don't do the hard jobs. Like, that doesn't really matter when there's millions of excess men that need to fucking eat. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not needed, right? We're not, we're, there's just too many of us. Like, and then Todd used to talk about this about how, you know, you would have the local baker or the local butcher and everybody looked out for each other. Everybody, everybody was valuable. The garbage man, it's not that way anymore. I, there's just there's too many yeah, people like i know guys i know guys dumb i know a butcher he's childless he's unmarried he has no girlfriend i know a uh, a, a garbage driver he's he has no he has no wife he, he drives a garbage truck for a living he, yeah. he's not married he lives with his brother his brother's an incel and he makes more money than and he makes even more money than his garbage uh truck brother hmm. and he's an i mean he, he's an incel so you got guys that are working in factories. You got guys working as postmen, you know, mailmen. You've got guys driving semi trucks, garbage truck. I know these people. I've talked to them firsthand. They don't have a family. Like, mm -hmm. I'm just thinking to myself, like, this, uh, like, no, I'm like, I'm, I just, I like you, man. I think you're cool because it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you. Like, you quit your job. Like, fuck, why the fuck should I drive a fucking truck? <laughs> Who gives well, a shit? Well, I didn't quit. I mean, I could have quit, but like I just let him fire me so I could get unemployment. But um, yeah, it was a whole thing with trying to get back to work after going to the psych ward and getting diagnosed with uh, alcoholism, alcohol use disorder they call it now, and major depression um, disorder. Uh, both of those things were recommended to have six months um, disqualification to get a medical card and. Uh, so yeah, I was I was fired for not for not qualifying anymore. I wasn't able to. to um, well, there's a whole story there. I did get one initially, but the company didn't accept it, so I had to go back a second time to get one. And then that doctor turned me away, disqualified me. But yeah, I don't I didn't really care. I mean, I could have I could have just took the first and then the first one and then went back to work, but I just didn't want to. I, I'm just I did it for over 20 years. I'm just I'm just I I can't. I mean, I, I kind of want to be able to, to do it as a backup if I'm desperate and I have to. But, uh, yeah, I'm just tired of it. And I wish I wish I was like – I wish truck driving was like like the government agencies that if you work 20 years, you get a pension. Because I'd get a pension already at, at, at 43. So, but, yeah, unfortunately, now you got to work in – the, in the private sector, you got to work, but 40, 40 years or whatever. So. Yeah, and like I said, Dom, we talked about it earlier, like, and what are we doing it for? I have to wash my own laundry. I got to make my own lunches. I got to get the mail. I got to mow the lawn. I got to clean the house. I got to, you know what I mean? Like, what are we doing all this for? Yeah. Yeah. There's no reason for us to have a house. Um, there's no reason to even have a. a I don't even want a house, dumb. Yeah. Like, why do I have a house? I could, I'd be fine with an apartment, but guess what? That's gonna cost more money. Like it's cheaper to own a house. It's so retarded. It is. It's it is. I, retarded. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, there's no reason. Like I, I, I'd be happy with a room somewhere. Like I, I kind of brought that uh, uh, the idea up one time about having like an incel house. Everybody, because what gave me the idea was being in the psych ward, and everybody had like their. Well, you had to share a room, but everybody had. The, so you had this big long hall hallway. Everybody had these rooms, and then you had the you know, the, um, the other areas where, you know, you all gather, whatever that's called the public space, whatever. And I was like, well, how great would this be? You know, all those lonely people, mostly men, lonely men, you know, if we could just live in a, a, something like this and then we go out to the kitchen, you know, and we socialize and we watch a, a football game together. And then we go back to our own rooms and then we all share expenses. And then we, we may, maybe we pitch in for a maid or someone to mow the grass or something. And we kind of just have a, like a, you know, we kind of just share, you know, I don't know what you call that. I can't remember right now, but uh, yeah, I think that would be a great idea. Uh, why, how, why should we all have our separate stupid houses and, you know, that has, you know, how many rooms and we don't use any of them and, and you got to upkeep it. You know, all, all I need is a room. That's it. Shit, I, I had to step away. Sorry, Dom. You still there? That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I had to step away. Um, Dom, I, I figured uh, I'll ask you who's Amanda? 
Uh, yeah, she's a YouTube. Um, she's a YouTuber who. Uh, she she made a video about Todd, and then he kind of he kind of brought us her, her in to the to to the light. You know, made her known, and then uh, yeah, we all kind of. We all kind of had a thing for this young hottie, <laughs> this, young, this young attractive uh, uh, woman. So, but yeah, I kind of get overly. Um, I don't know. She she gave me uh, the, the 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 tiniest bit of attention, and I I, I just kind of lost my shit. And uh, yeah, so she's 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 kind of part of, of, of this sphere what kind of attention. Uh, she made a couple YouTube uh, comments on my uh, YouTube page, uh, channel, and then um, I made a video once I got out of the psych ward, and um, yeah, but uh, yeah, addressed to me, but yeah, it, it, yeah, I um, I just I go crazy over that girl, and I don't, I don't, I the only thing I could think have of you, is she gave me a little him, bit of attention. Have you given Amanda money? No, no, she never asked for it. No, it's not, it's not like that word. I, it, it. It is pretty much like a parasocial relationship, except it's one way. Like, like to be a parasocial relationship, as far as I understand, you got to have it. You got to have it like a two way thing. Ba you, basically, you've never, you've never, you've never gave her money. No. no. Okay. Good. Good on you, dumb. I. I, you, you, I mean, I probably would have if she would have asked. Like, I, I emailed her on how many times. Like, I tried to do that. Uh, that dating thing, you know, where you pay her for like an hour. But yeah, of course, she wouldn't do it with me. <laughs> So I probably would have. Whoa, 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 whoa! You yeah. gave her forty dollars? No, no, no. I'm just saying, it, it. She wouldn't accept. She wouldn't. She didn't want me as a client. But if she had, I, I would have. So, so why do you obsess about her so much? I don't know. Um, I try not to. I try not to simp. I try not to simp. And uh, I, I was trying to. You know, I don't use the the coffee mug that I made anymore. And, uh, I, I tried, I tried to, uh, and I just keep, I don't know. I'd find her very attractive and, and, um, well, if you're I, 40, all 24 year old girls look hot. Yeah. Well, no, that's not necessarily true. <laughs> uh, a lot of these well, are maybe not all, but as long as they're not overweight. No, I know what you're saying though. Like there are young women that I would have never really thought were attractive when I was their age that, yeah, I, I, could, probably, like good I could probably get it. I could probably get I could probably do a like a like a chubby young girl, but when they start getting old, like oof, like yeah. the, the fat girls when they're they age out. It's I mean I, I don't I'm not I've never really never really went with a fat girl, but like the, yeah, the, chubby, did, the chubby young twenty year olds aren't so bad, but like that's not the same as like a forty year old fat chick. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so yeah, so it's kind of like a fantasy, I guess. It was lived out here on YouTube, and then yeah, she got tired of my shit and took down the one video. And then I don't know. I I, I just need to. I, I need to just. I, I just need to stop talking about her. And now you brought her up well, again. Well, dumb, so. dumb, like <laughs> dumb, like you, you like, like. I don't know how to say this. Like, you care about people. Like you're a yeah. man. Well, you have, that's you have, why you have, you have like a good heart. You have a good spirit, a good soul. Well, I wanted her to like, know because women, she... women don't care about us, bro. Like, don't I don't know. Like, like it's like it's don't what? don't worry about it, bud. Like, you don't give a. F she lives like thousands of miles away. Who cares about her? Yeah, that's what Todd said, and I. I mean, in hindsight, in hindsight, dude off like literally like tonight. So I mean, who cares? Like, let her have her fun. Like, I don't know. Like, why? if you're so. uh stuck on this girl amanda like why don't you just go on like a dating app like uh, there's probably some girl that might even like hang out with you like actually nah. nah there's no woman that you know no i already did tinder i don't know how many times and all i get is bots and big fat black women who never meet up with me and um it's just i'm um, destroyed by foids uh in the chat learn to love your lonely life you know Destroyed by Foids. I'm actually, I'm actually doing that. Like, I, I don't know. Uh, life is different when you get, life changes. My dad said this to me, dumb, that life, life is about change. Mm -hmm. You know, life change, that change happens. And I didn't really think he meant, he, I thought he was kind of nuts when he said it. Cause I was like nine years old, but now that I'm older, like I get it. 
like things change dumb like i i don't have the big christmas parties like when i was like a kid with all my cousins like i'm at an asian restaurant or at a casino gambling or drinking probably like things change and you're obsessing about loneliness but you're like this big fan of todd who hates people Mm -hmm. um yeah there's a lot of contradictory things that's what i'm saying dumb before you go on dumb like let me learn from what todd's expressing that you know maybe maybe what what destroyed by Floyd has said in the chat like get used to being a little more lonely and and it's not all bad but like Mm -hmm. think about it you don't have to take some frumpy fat woman to like a like their their doctor appointment like you got what like feminism saved us millennial like gen x men we don't have to like yeah, well, what do you, you know, what do you, what do, you do then? What, what's life about them? What, 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 what's our point? What's our purpose? I go, I go golfing. You ever go golfing? No, I never did, but it doesn't look very much fun. I don't have anybody to go with anyway. Why would I go by oh, myself? No, but d- dumb. That's the point, dumb. It, that it, nothing's fun by yourself. You go with like your buddies, and then you just all hate you know hate women together. Well, it's that's fun. why I have to move somewhere where there's guys maybe i met on here or something where we could hang out because there's nobody around here i don't know anybody i don't i lived here for almost 14 years now and like and why do, people, why, do, why do people play video games like i love i used to love video games and i, I don't want to hate the gaming people like i i get it i get why you play video games because society sucks like i used to love playing video games like nowadays they're just too they're too advanced like yeah now, they're very nowadays, hard. now that nowadays they fly you know, you play like Call of Duty or Halo, they, they're flying around and there's just so much happening nowadays. Like uh, the games are just so the graphics like I'm old, like I, I played like 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 ping pong or whatever the fuck, like Tetris <laughs> when I was a kid, you know, the Atari shit. <laughs> yeah, like I played literally Atari, Sega Genesis, you know, well, you Nintendo can play those games, though. They do have emulators that they're online but, here. But my I- point is dumb. And I my, when I bring up the video game thing, it's I get it like. But it's 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 a it's a that togetherness. You're not doing it by yourself. I don't play video games by myself, and partially why I kind of gave up the video game culture. Well, besides the fact that I'm old, is just the censorship. You know, when I was on like Xbox Live when I was a teenager, we could say like the N word, and we could like be ourselves. Mm-hmm. And now it's like they ban you for like hate speech, and I, I don't know. Oh, but a black guy can say it though. It's you fine. know, we used to we used to play like Super Smash Brothers in in my one of my bedroom, you know, in my bedroom with my buddies. We'd have like four of us in the same room, all watching the same screen. You know, it was there was a social aspect to it. You know, yeah. to, to play uh, games by yourself in your room, like with no one around, and like, well, sure, somebody on the internet, but I don't know. I, it's just not the same for me. But I, I get why people do the gaming thing. I guess what I'm saying, dumb, is like. When you say what are we to do i'm saying that like you have to have like a like a like a like a social group someone to do stuff with you know someone like-minded right but if everybody hates you how do you get that i i, I don't dumb you dumb you have like two thousand subscribers you're a youtube star well you, I would... <laughs> you, could probably do, you could probably do like gaming streams and you'd have like two three buddies they probably all like totally agree with everything we said tonight I mean, yeah, I mean, I got a subscriber, but I mean, that's, I don't know. It, it, I'm talking about real life, though. I mean, I know, I know they're real people, at least most of them, but, um, you know, I'm talking about like, like right here, like I'm still alone right here but by myself. Like, who do I, like you mentioned golf, like who, who do you go out? Who do I go out with? There's, there's nobody. And it's been that way my whole life. I don't know. I don't know who, I don't know who to, uh, like your brother, I, I've tried, I've tried. Like dumb, dumb, your brother <laughs> don't go fishing or hunting. Uh, no, I don't really know what they uh, do. Motorcycling. No. Um, what else is there? Uh, I got an ATV. I'd take that up on my camping. Myself. You ever go camping with your like your brothers or? No, nah, I went alone. I went camping alone uh, out in South Dakota. See, see, like all this stuff that I'm talking about is boring by yourself. It is. It sucks. Like, if you're with people, it's fucking fun, man. I'm going to Branson, Missouri, in a you know uh, the the Ozarks in a like a couple like a month or something. Oh, I don't know, cool. In a few weeks here, or six weeks. I don't know. We're going out there soon. I, I'm gonna go golfing and drinking all day, like with my buddies. It's gonna be fun. Like sure. we're gonna just get fucked up on the golf course and just screw around. It's gonna be great. Smoke cigars, you know. Say, you know, hit on the pretty cart girls. Don't do that. They're like, you know, you might as well hit on the waitresses. Like, like everybody does that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I just, uh, you know, I don't. Uh, 
sitting idle, dumb, is some, maybe something to speak to. Like, that's maybe part of your problem, dumb. It, you got to you gotta be busy, like, doing shit. Like, I had a buddy of mine bug, bugging me the other, you know, bugging me today. He was bugging me earlier today, like, about, about a golf tea time tomorrow. And I'm not like, I, I could go golfing, but, well, you know, I don't really care. But he wants to go. So it's like, oh, sure, let's do it. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, I don't know. It's you, you got to have uh, like hobbies, stuff to do. If you're just sitting around thinking about how your life sucks, your life's never going to get any better. I mean, yeah, I'm sure I, you've I heard agree. like I'm sure you've heard like baby steps. Like, I don't know. I, I don't want to like tell you what to do, dumb, because I actually like watching you like like how your like house is a mess and you just kind of you got your little blankie and you're just <laughs> And you're just talking. You're just t- telling people, you know, you're you're very real. It's like a it's like a real life Truman show. And I'm, I'm a big fan of yours, dumb. I, I, really, <laughs> I really like your channel, man. <laughs> well, thank you, man. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I I agree. Uh, I just I, I there's just the I don't I don't got any buddies. I, I mean, I know my brothers could um, they, see. They they just always work too. They work. So I got I got like three brothers up here still there's a couple down in florida um and there's a couple sisters around but like we're kind of spread out and all they do is work and they got their own families so they're kind of off the you know they're not really they don't really want to do anything except do their family stuff um yeah you know dom that's something i've noticed over the years like my dad was like you or like many men who just want to like a like a wife and kids and like a white picket fence and like a loving dutiful wife and a, and a house and yeah and then there's be, like, be like an upstanding man uh, a, a member of the community and my dad chased that his entire life and he never got it and well he never really got it and like you know i, I observed this dumb like seeing his friends like i always wondered like why do my dad's friends not have like children or like a wife mm. and they just didn't really bother with it because they kind of knew it's not going to, I don't know. It's like, they just, you know, you kind of know it's not working out for most guys. So why, like they did their, their hobbies. They like my one dad's buddy had like classic cars, muscle cars. Mm. And my other dad, uh, my other buddies, you know, my, my dad's other buddy, he, he went four wheeling. He went fishing like every, he went ice fishing every winter. You know, and he'd hang out at the ice, you know, the ice house and he'd, you know, all the, all the men up there and they'd all be out there ice fishing and playing like cribbage together or whatever poker, you know, um, I guess my point is dumb is like you and Brandon's in the chat, like, oh, not everyone's into sports. Like you don't have to be good at golf to play golf. Like I'm not saying you have to pick, pick anything, but pick something you like with people you like uh that's my advice dom it's like do stuff that like you like to do with other people and like it's not i don't know i don't think it should be that hard because like dumb nobody's you're not like alone dude like you know how many men are fucking miserable and alone and fucking bored fuck Hmm. man they're they're everywhere uh yeah I, i i I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know how you meet people. And like, I, I went on like the friends finder before. Like, I, 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 I don't know. I'm not that kind of personality where I could just go to the local golf club and just start talking to people. And, uh, you know, like, I don't know. I never see like single guys by my, like myself just hanging out, like doing like, so you're supposed to like invade like a friend group. And then and, I don't know. I, I think after a certain age, you're kind of just fucked. You know, uh, it's, and then I'm kind of antisocial sometimes too. Um, but I, I would, I would like to do things. I don't know exactly what right now. I mean, there's nothing really. Well, I'm I just saying, dumb. Like, nothing really. I want to talk about your do. anxiety and your, you know, some of your mental issues. Like, I just think it's just like having something to do, having discipline, having regiment would help with that. I'm not saying it's the answer. Be make everything better. You know what I'm saying? Does that well, make- don't, don't you think though that it's kind of like again, it's kind of like your your genetics, how you're built, how your mind is. Like there's some people who can um 
they're good at math, or then there's another guy who's good at science. We all got strengths and weaknesses, is my point. And some of us are just fucked in the head, and we're just doomed to be alone, and we're just, I, I, we just need to, I. I'm just here trying to cope and hang out. And um, I, I mean, I, I, I don't think, I don't think saying, I, I, I just don't think, I don't think I'm capable basically of, you know, doing what you're saying <laughs> to, to, you know, to get friends and to do these things. Like, I don't know. I don't know how I, I would, I would go about doing it. Um, I mean, in theory, I would like to, you know, but you know, I'm 43 and uh, haven't had a friend since middle school, so it doesn't look good. But I mean, I appreciate the suggestions. It's just I don't, and I always hate like shooting people's ideas down all the time because I mean, I agree with a lot of stuff that people say. It's just you know, it's just not that. It's just not that. I don't know how to do it. You know, it's like. Hit the gym, bro, or something. You know, I mean, it's like, yeah, if you feel good and you're you don't have heart palpitations and you don't feel like you're dying every day and you you're healthy and yeah, you go ahead and do it. And well, by the way, you know, I might as well inject some steroids in myself. And, you know, um, Brandon but, L in the chat, uh, truth. Nobody wants to make friends at this age. Men just want to flex on you and shit on you. I actually, there's some truth to that. Uh, people don't. It's my men are like competitive, like. Like keeping up with the Joneses. Like I've got a better car than you. I'm gonna out. I'm gonna tell a better story than you. You, you get a lot of that with like with mm -hmm. men, where, where you try to have us, you know, socialize, and they just want to tell you a bigger and better story every time you engage with them, and it, it, it it's frustrating. Uh, I I do see that that it's hard to bond and connect with you know men, uh, you know, friends, someone to. You know, uh, you know, hanging out with the boys, doing something, you know, um, constructive or fun or, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I guess it's maybe my mishap or my miscalculation. Like I'm, you know, you, you've said it before, Dom, on streams where people don't think like you think everyone thinks like you. And that's just not the way it is. Yeah, it's not. Like I, I was surprised when I first started figuring out that, no, not everybody um, has the same especially being a working class white guy because white white men specifically are very like a, a universal people mm -hmm. and you know you get these other ethnic groups they don't see things like that uh, the way it's it's not a one size fits all they have their own kind of story and so being like the white guy and thinking everyone's like us it's just not true well i think they're better like family like like the minorities like they like the black people like they have uh you know, the first, the second, and third cousins all live close together, and they, they, and the Mexicans well, got their. And another know, thing I'm saying, dumb with like, when I say that, I realize this because like I'm tall, you know, and living in the, you know, the, you know, spending time in the black pill space, like I forget, like I'm, I'm like a tall guy, like if you're short and fat and bald, nobody cares about you or thinks anything of you. Like, no. just, I, I, I guess I forget that sometimes dumb. Like you, you think everyone thinks like you do. Well, I forget that I'm like taller than everybody. So people like, I, I, I get respect by default. Sure. So like, you know, I do have like a, a lure or, or I lure people. Uh, people want to be around me or young, you know, men, guys. Yeah. I mean, all you have to do a is, guy, go... a guy, you know, some of these guys want to go golfing with me because I'm, I'm bigger than they are. You know, I, I guess yeah. there is something to that. Yeah. Yeah. All you have to do is go into like a social setting, some kind of, you know, like a party or some kind of, you know, like a hundred people gather and see the kind of look, you know, who gathers around who, who who's alone. And, um, you know, you'll see the unde undesirable sitting by themselves. You know, it's just kind of human nature and um, it, it just sucks. But like I so like let, like when I made, tried to make friends, like when I was a truck driver and like I would talk to these other truck drivers, at the truck stops and some of them, you know, I thought would gravitate towards me. And this 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 would happen every time, time, time after time where. We would be talking, and by the way, they would do most of the talking. But you know, whatever. I would, you know, I, I would listen. But as soon as another truck driver would come up, uh, that that was the end of me. And I could have just walked away, and I did a few times, and just went back to my truck because I wasn't uh, needed anymore. I wasn't wanted anymore. They had, you know, this, the better guy. So yeah, I mean, that, that was that's kind of like the experience of my life trying to make make friends like that, where you're just you're just not 
you're not the desirable one that people, even the, even the other men, want to hang out with. So you're you're left you're left by yourself. Yeah, you know, like if I went to a bar, I'd be left in the corner, you know, peeling the label off the bottle, and you know, it, there wouldn't be any, you know, uh, that happened many times, and so there's no point in even going. <laughs> there's a point. There's no point in even trying. There really isn't. Do you think you deserve neat bucks, dumb? Uh, I think I, I put in my time. I paid hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes. I I don't want to use the word deserve because we're not really entitled to anything. But I I you know I think because I paid in all 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 my life, they, they don't want me to take out shit. They just want me to be. Yeah, you, know, you got some that take, and you got some that 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 contribute, and I'm the contributor. But um, I don't know. Some days I think I could work a job, and other days I don't. So this past week, it might have been alcohol related because my anxiety got severe when I started drinking again. So um, uh, if I improve, I'll think that no, I don't need um, need bucks. But then there's other so. But I even told a psychiatrist that before. I was like, I'm like a part time retard. Like I, I just so I'll go days, weeks, and I'll, I'll be fine. And then I'll just you know I'll just go off a cliff again. And then I'll I'll you know, so, yeah, you know, and it's hard. It's hard to hold a job down like that. It's just, it's just. I was lucky with the guys I worked for that um, they 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 weren't so quick to, to to fire me, and they were kind of understanding. But it was. It's hard. It's hard because you know, if you have a panic attack or you know, you got pulled over on the road and lay on the freaking shoulder because you, you think you're dying, and and you, then you're late, and um. Yeah, I, it's just hard to hold to hold a job down like that. So, like sometimes I, I do think I, I need a I need neat bucks, but um, I mean I'd rather be a productive member of society and not be uh, a lazy, you know, whatever. But um, you know, sometimes like, like you know, yeah. I mean, I, I, so yeah, I just I don't know. It just depends. It just depends on, on what day. You know, if I think I um, system leak in the not. chat. System leak in the chat wants to know uh, you got married. Uh, why do you think you're unwanted if you got married? Well, it uh, when, when when she left, uh, really felt unwanted. Um, now it was up, it was my whole life up until that point. Except, you ever heard okay. of the expression that you have to fight for her? Yeah, um, dude. But come on, it was a few weeks. I like. Like, I didn't mean, like, again, I worked and I didn't even, like, I don't know. We, like, I didn't even get a chance. To, we didn't even really get a chance well, women, to argue. Like women I, don't love like you, dumb. Like, dumb, you're a man. You're, you're like a, like, good hearted. You have, like, a good spirit. You, you, you're, you're, well, not, she a, you're not a, you're not a trickster. Yeah. You're, well, someone, she you're someone who cares. You're, you have a good heart. You're, you're a very, uh, well, I like to think you're, so. a, you're a sensitive man. Like, you, you're the penetrator. You're the man. Why would you expect the same thing from a woman? Woman's just going to receive. Your yeah. woman, you married her. You should have fought for well, her. Well, I didn't. I don't had. I didn't have any experience with this shit. Like I, so I was supposed to buy her flowers and stuff. I guess, oh, I did one time, and then she just threw them to the side, and that was it. Didn't even say anything. So I mean, I feel like I did try. I did bring her to Hawaii, and I did. I mean, I. It's just when she was here, most of the time, like I said, I was just working and sleeping, and um. But I mean, I felt unwanted when she left. And then the whole, the whole, most of my life up until that point as well. And then after, you know, like, um, and, and yeah, I mean, so, uh, it's not like, it's, it's not, it's not easy. I mean, I, I no one said it was going to be easy, but it's just, it's not, um, I just don't seem to be wanted. And, uh, and then other men as well. Uh, just seemed to reject me and uh, all, all my attempts at friendship. And I don't stuff. know. Don't like the, I think maybe you're putting a little, putting a show of a face on a little bit. I mean, and I, and I don't want to disparage your, your, your plight. Yeah. But, but bro, you, you've got a following. Like people love you, man. Like you got 2000, you got 2000 subs. You're uh, people care about this stuff and people i mean you're not you know you're not as lonely as you think i think i'm, I'm sure you got i'm sure you got tons of guys on discord bugging and you. i just and i just got a uh, a package in the mail somebody said open it on your birthday and so i don't know who that was it came from iowa um yeah i know but i i i, 
you're, you you have to. I appreciate everybody. I do. I always say that on my streams. I appreciate everybody coming in, and I, I love everybody. Yes, I am wanted on here, but when I first made the YouTube channel, and that's when I called myself that. I mean, I guess I could rename myself, um, you know, but in real life, I still think that I'm not wanted. So, um, you know, maybe I could change it to in real life. I'm an unwanted depressed man. I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, or, or, or just take the unwanted part off, but, um, no. And so, yes, yeah, so I was just talking about the, the, you know, the title was before, before, you know, YouTube, but, uh, you're right. I mean, there are a lot of people who seem to gravitate towards me and I, uh, and, I, and I appreciate them and I don't feel alone when I'm on here, uh, you know, streaming with everybody. It, it's been a godsend and I, I don't feel nearly as lonely as I, as I, as I once did. And it took a long time for me to even try the live streaming. A lot of people were telling me to, to do it. And I just, I don't know, I guess my nerves, my anxiety, whatever. I just never wanted to. And uh, yeah, it's been like the greatest thing. So, um, you yeah. know, I'm, uh, uh I just want to, I, I don't know how to say this. I just, I commend you. Like, I, I support you. I, uh, I, I'm jealous almost. Like, you're, I think you're pretty, fun. I think it's pretty cool that you were able to get on the internet and just tell your story. And you're like a, a true YouTuber and <laughs> in the real word, uh, dumb. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, you know, it's raw. It's 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 good. It's yeah. It's, well, I mean, you're the same. Um, I think people, you, uh, you in mystery school. I mean, but, but you're using your real face. You've yeah, got sure. your camera on, and you're 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 just expressing yourself. Like men, we don't get any. Men are men are fucking. Men are putting on a, you know, men are uh, shielding themselves from the world, and you're you're sort of unveiling the cloak and saying come after me come you know come at me bro and i love yeah. it yeah but then on the other but then but then you know they say that i'm not a, a, a depressed or unwanted anymore so <laughs> so you know you get you get both, both sides so uh but yeah you'll get criticism anyway i mean it doesn't really matter i guess you'll get either you know you'll get both sides um, what do you think about the black pill dumb um, black pill I, streamers, black pill YouTube spaces. Um, just I, general general thoughts on the black pill. I agree. I mean, I agree with the black pill. It's just I don't, I don't see any point in continually talking about it. No offense to Mystery School. I mean, you know, like his panel members, like they always want to talk about, you know, you know, faces the master race, and you got to be hot. You got to have looks, and you got to. You gotta be so high, or you know your 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 height, and you know be a be a software engineer and and or whatever, and do, you know it's always the same shit, and it's just I don't like to listen to the same stuff over and over again. I mean, I like those guys, uh, I, I like what they have to say. It's just it's the same, it's the same stuff, it's the same repetitive stuff, and maybe maybe I'm the same way. Maybe I talk about the same stuff all the time, but from when I listen to it, it's like I can only listen to it, you know. The same goddamn thing so many times it's like we're watching the same movie over and over and over again so that's my only criticism i mean i do i do like a lot of those guys uh and and yeah i mean the black i mean women the women's nature the way they are i mean yeah i mean you you, you gotta you gotta have face lms right i mean that, that's that's what they want so and then you know so they were unveiling the truth um you know we were always told growing up and stuff that oh women didn't care about looks so yeah, they're, they're they're great. It's just there's only so much you can say in a black pill space, but before it gets severely repetitive. So what do you what what do you think? You think you think do you you agree with that? Like or, or I don't know. Someone else said that it's because a lot of them are autistic, so they can keep repeating the same stuff over and over again. <laughs> what are your that thoughts, happened. Dom? What are your thoughts about people saying you're not a real incel? Uh, it doesn't hurt my I feelings. Think Aaron's, I, I think Aaron's journal gets some flack too. Uh, go ahead. Well, no, it doesn't hurt my feelings because uh, I never really claimed. I mean, I might have said I was a couple of times, but I never really came on here and, and claimed to be for one. And and two, I I I clear. I said right from the beginning, even on my other channel, and I got married, and I, you know, I mean, so maybe I'm a near cell or something because, um, you know, it, I don't I don't get laid very easily or very often unless I unless I pay for it. Uh, so like I went. 
I went, let's see, I lost my virginity at 25, and then and then I had sex again at 29, and then I had sex again at 37. And then it's been since I had, and then since 38, it's been prostitutes or nothing. So, I mean, so yes, I guess I'm not a, an incel, but like I never really, and I don't care if people, like I don't, <laughs> this is the thing, like people want to say, oh, you're not an incel, like it's a bad thing. Well, thank you. Like I'm glad for these experiences. I, I am. I'm just a depressed and wanted man. Is what, what I'm trying to say. Like and everything you know that, that, that deals with that. Like and th then people want to say, well, you had sex, so how are you depressed or how are you unwanted or whatever? But um, I don't know. That's how. That's that's that, that, that's how I feel. I just um, if a 25 year old virgin man heard this conversation tomorrow, would you recommend that he see an you know, uh, an, es an escort, a, a prostitute. No, because, uh, well, depending on where you live, if it's legal. And, okay, so Todd's advice was to never see the same woman twice because I fell in love with, like, every woman I had sex with. So I, I did, like, the opposite of what he did. So I, I only ever saw a few, but I had bad experiences with, with a few of them. And I, and with my anxiety issues, it, it was difficult to finish sometimes i didn't um and some of them took advantage of me and i didn't get anything and um and then i got a couple stds i think i think i got the words and the the herpes from it and uh, i'm not i'm not sure who gave me what but um so but then there's the law you got to worry about and i had a lot of anxiety over that uh, and then the women just don't, they're not warm. They're not, they're very cold, distant. They're, they got their guard up. They think you're going to kill them or rape them or something. And um, it's just not a good experience usually until, until I met Tiffany. And then I saw her like the hundredth time. We kind of developed some sort of relationship. It wasn't real, a real relationship, but you know, we would go out, get pizza or something. We would do things. It was kind of like the girlfriend experience. It was a much more, more realistic kind of, it was something that I liked to do. So I guess it just depends on the person, but I don't I don't like to recommend it just because you know how shady it is and the STD risk and you get robbed and go to jail and have a sex offender registry or whatever on your record and I don't ever want to recommend something like that and then someone ruin their life because of what I said and um, and it's not always fun and games it's not I had some good experiences but also had some very bad ones so I don't want to I don't want to ever recommend it I don't. I don't think I'm ever going to do it again myself. Yeah, Dom, I, I can't, I can't find myself in that place where I would like find an, a, like a service to get me laid. That just seems foreign to me. Yeah. But yeah. I'm not like, it's again, not natural. I, I don't, you know, hold it like any moral. I don't hold any moral grudge against people who do it. Yeah, I, I don't either. I, mean, I used to when I was a Christian, but like to me, these women that I've met are very, again, they're cold. They're they want to do it, um, because it's easy money, and they're just like, they're just mean, and, I mean, they they'll just cut your balls off if, you, if I mean, I don't know. They're just very hardened. Even 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 the the young one, you, you know, they're, they're just very hardened criminal type not my kind of people let alone woman uh they're they're not they're not soft or demure or or you know the kind of woman that i like they're just they're not they're, they're criminals basically and i guess it makes me a criminal too for doing it but they're the criminal type if you know what i mean they're, they're just shady and it's it's gross and i kind of wish i never even did it to be honest and i just wasted a lot of money and you know had a had some good experiences, but some bad ones, and I just didn't think I just don't think it's worth it, and it costs too much. So, yeah. So at the end of the day, a, a young guy who hasn't had the desire of a woman shouldn't seek. You know, you you think it's not worth it? It's not not going to like fix anything, or. I mean, I think I said I think I heard Todd talk about how he's glad he, that he did it, and he'd wished he'd done it sooner. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, he and said. I've that had much. people tell me that you know I've I've known virgins in their 30s and friends of mine say tell him to get a prostitute and just get it over with yeah i guess i see that that argument like get it over with but what kind of pro 
okay, like it's just like what kind? I don't know. It just depends on the person. So so Todd liked it. Like it, it I guess it fit his personality, and and he goes up to Canada where it's legal. I mean, it just so it just depends on your location, what kind of person you are, your your issues, and if you just want to stick your dick in, inside of a woman, and you don't care how cold and distant and evil and criminal and shady and 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 for the streets she is you know i i like well i've said it before on stream i mean prostitution should be legal and that sure pornography should be illegal well i think everything should be legal just about unless you hurt harm somebody but um you know whatever i mean yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm libertarian, so I think everything should be basically legal. Um, I think Magnus in the chat, Magnus, you're a hundred percent on the ball. Hollywood movies would make you think otherwise, but no, sex is completely overrated. It's not a big deal. Like I don't know, like Hollywood movies make it like it's the end all be all. If you're not having good sex, you're not living life. Like it's it's not science like it's not like some yeah. crazy like equation you have to let it's sex it's just i don't know and we have to remember it's hard for us see see we're all fucked because of media not only the women like the men too because we think and then and then and then the one a small space of time with, with the boomers where everybody had a woman like like I think it was mystery or some other stream I was listening to where um, they were saying, you know, most men in most of history didn't get pussy. Really? I mean, you, you died in war. Yeah. You, know, you, you know, you left at 16, 15, you, you never had sex and you went and died in a war or something, you know, like, you know, only, only like certain men got to, got to, got to marry. Uh, Magnus, I wish I was a virgin. I don't want to sound like a crazy person, but I don't know, man. Like, I'd just rather be a virgin than deal with modern women in America. Like I'd rather be like a guy who's just never even went down that path, down that road. Like once you start having sex, you just, I don't know. You kind of have to keep that. I don't know. That sounds kind of weak, but yeah, I got addicted to it. Like, like well, you start fucking a girl and having sex. Like the idea that like, you're just going to quit having sex. Like that's the point. Like, yeah, it's like you, a know, drug. you wait to have sex to like the woman you marry or what the man you marry. Like, uh, I don't know. Like, I'd almost prefer to be a virgin than to be dealing with these, you know, skanks. Like, I don't know. If you're just like normie guy, and I hate, I hate this. Like, sounds blackmailing. But if you're just like a normie guy, like, I don't know, man. Like, you better your your life's gonna be like more peaceful without fucking like, women like bringing chaos and drama in your life. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Like, I don't know, dumb. Like. I want you to think about it, dumb. Like your life's not it's not all bad, man. Like, like fuck, you got a place to live. You got you got some money. You're not gonna starve tomorrow. Like, I don't know, bro. Like people have had it way worse throughout human history. Like, I don't know, maybe just maybe have it like have that uh what is it that you know uh, appreciation a little bit? Like you're on the internet every day, fucking around, screwing on the internet, you know, screwing around on the internet. You don't have to work yeah. at some coal factory or whatever coal mine. Um, you know, you get DoorDash. You get you can go buy booze if you want. You could you can do whatever you want. You can fucking uh, yeah. you, you can get VR porn tonight after we click off the stream here. You can watch VR porn. I, I don't know. This is these are all copes. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of talking shit, but I mean, no, uh, I I agree. I. I know like people told me this before about being grateful and stuff. And it's like, dude, you don't know. I don't think you realize what I'm not talking to you directly, but, but people don't realize what you have to do for this shit. Like all, all I went through now, you know, I'm not the best with my money. I'm terrible with it, but all, all I went through to do to get all this stuff. And to me, it wasn't worth it. Now, you know, call me, you know, ungrateful or whatever but it's not like it was just given to me and so i worked my ass off to get doordash i worked my ass off to get a pickup or a motorcycle or whatever and i don't i i i just can't sit back and 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 be grateful that like it's not like god gave it to me you know i i it, it, I, I traded in my labor my life uh years years of my life uh, blood sweat and tears if you will 
And they exchange. I now finally I get a few months of where I can fuck all, fuck around on the internet or whatever. But I'm gonna have to go right back at some point, probably. And so, um, how can you be grateful um, when? Oh no, my! I when, relate with you, dumb. Uh, yeah. uh, Autisticus spasticus. DoorDash is a luxury service in America where you can have McDonald's or any restaurant food delivered to your door within minutes. It's a f you pay a fee about well, how much is a DoorDash delivery? Dumb. I think my average is like thirty, somewhere around there, give or take. So you pay thirty bucks, you get what a Big Mac. Uh, yeah, you. Uh, I got. Well, last time I got McDonald's was like two cheeseburgers, a fry, a, a flurry. Um, That's thirty dollars. Well, yeah, there's it's it's. Holy it's fuck! You got to tip them and. Uh, or it might have been like 27, but anyway, you got to tip them. Like I tip them like 10 bucks and then whatever the cost is. So yeah, it's not a good thing to do. Like I, you know, it, I don't recommend anyone just blowing their money on, on that shit. I'm, I'm just saying people want to shit on me for like, yo, I, I don't know. I, I, I just see it differently. I, I, I am grateful that, um, I'm not even grateful to be alive. I, I wish I wasn't even alive. So what do you well, want? What, well, what, what do they want to call me no, there? I was, but I mean, I, was I am grateful say, that. Dom, that, what I was gonna say, Dom, is that I like I I get what you're saying. Like you, I don't work, I don't want to exist. I want to I want I don't want to be here, I, and and life was forced upon me, and uh, I hate it. And I, 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 my 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 life was fucking meaningless. Well, that, that's my that's kind of what I'm getting at, Dom. Like I. You worked all your life in your, your adult life. And like, like, what are we working for? Cause you know, I had a coworker ask me, what do I want? Do I want to be famous or do I want money? And I, I said to him, I want I want a belonging. Yeah. And I think that's what's Family. going on with a lot of like working class white specifically. And I'm sure black, you know, incels have their issues too and other, other groups, but I think white working class people specifically like have no belong. Like, like, I mean, maybe, maybe the rest of the groups feel the same way in, in quote America. Yeah. I don't care about the black people. I, I, well, I just don't, I, I, it's like, what, the I, fuck, what are we doing? The black people ought to take care of themselves. They ought to police themselves. You know, like I, I'm not worried about the black man. I can't do anything for him anyway. And he hates me anyway. So you know, ditto in return, and you're gonna have to take care of your own goddamn problems, and then you know we can take care of our own. I ain't worried about the other races, and then like everybody's an asshole anyway. I mean, but I think what many, I'm touching on, dumb, is that how many white people have fucked you over a lot? So dumb, dumb. Well, I think what I'm touching on is that young guys don't really feel like they belong anywhere, and that's the problem. Like that's how that's where your happiness is sort of derived from is having a sense of belonging that I'm, I'm, I'm here for a reason. And, and there's a purpose to this. And that's what I think is missing with men. I don't belong and there's no purpose to this. What, what, what wow. am I here for? Am I just a slave for society? Uh, just somebody yeah, basically, and basically. And if you, and if you're not, if you're not smart enough, like if you're kind of stupid, like I am and, and do stupid shit with your money and get taken advantage of, you wind up broke and penniless. And then you wind up blowing your brains out behind the barn. Uh, you know, because you know, you got to take advantage of it or whatever. And, you know, and that, that happens to some people, you know, like someone just told me, uh, on my stream the other day about, you know, someone got their 401k taken from them, like their whole life savings. It was swindled from them somehow. And, you know, some kind of scam, he fell for it and he killed himself. I mean, I don't know if I should be using these words on YouTube on your, on your stream, but, um, yeah, so you work, you work, you work your whole life, and and then and then and yeah, and then you, your brains wind up, you know, against. I mean, it's so stupid. It's like it's so, it's so pointless. Like it's, it's just, it's and it's sad. Um, uh, Brandon, I was gonna post the the link in the chat here. I'm I'm sorry. I'm trying to find it. I I have so many subs in my fucking feed and. But it's uh, Todd the Happy Humble Hermit. Is that his new channel? Uh, Todd the Autistic Hermit. Todd the Autistic Hermit. Yeah. No. I I have him subbed here. I just I can't seem to find it because I have so many. I got it right here. I'll I'll post it in the. I'll post it in the uh, 
the yeah, live great, chat. great guy and uh, uh, well todd's todd's a fascinating individual yeah. i think he's a remarkable man i could i never get bored listening to him talk like he no. could talk for every day and i would listen yeah no i mean todd, yeah todd like he's very smart and um and uh yeah and we all look up to him he's kind of He's kind of our leader, whatever the sphere, the Spanish sphere or whatever. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, can't can't say enough good things about him. Um, yeah, he, he's just he's just a great guy. I mean, people people get jealous of him because he got neat books. But well, Todd's um, my favorite YouTuber of all time. I mean, he's the big yeah. dog in YouTube. Nobody, oh, sure. nobody's bigger than Todd. No. The happy, humble hermit. Yeah, and the problem is he kept getting deleted, and that's like his fifth YouTube channel. And so he 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 keeps trying to, um, yeah, he's got to keep coming back and starting over. But yeah, definitely, yeah. Like, who hasn't heard of Todd? So, I, I mean, some people haven't. Like you know, just it just depends. Like some sometimes you know they'll come on my channel, don't know who he is, but yeah, most people know. But yeah, he's. he's, well, he's uh... Dom, I, I just want to let you know, I, I think I'm about wrapped up for tonight. I, I okay. really appreciate you. Well, actually, I got one more one more thing I'll throw at you. You're well, not like me who uh, who will stream for 10 hours. <laughs> no, no. I, 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 <laughs> There's 12. Uh, yeah. fuck, these two-hour streams once or twice a week fucking wear me out. Oh, okay. But uh, I love streaming. I, I love YouTube. I love all the different YouTube channels out there. There's so many good ones. And sure. the Black Pill... The TFL, the the MGTOW, the Red Pill. Um, this know. is the best thing about the internet is that it brings us together. You know, I, I, otherwise, you know, I, I would, I really would think I'm all alone, and I would be all alone in this house. And um, you know, but having the internet and YouTube and stuff, like we can connect. And there's people from all around the world. You know, I've met. And uh, now some of them, like once, you know, I had a few like had like Russian characters or something in the YouTube. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to read it, but it just amazes me how you can connect with everybody. It's a, it's, it's, it's a great time, really, you know, for communication and stuff and, and connecting with people. So we should be able to use this to our advantage and not be goddamn lonely all the time somehow, you know, and meet in real life somehow. Yeah, it's a weird kind of weird thing where we're all connected, but we're all alone. Like, how to make that make sense? Yeah. No, yeah, make, 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 yeah, absolutely makes sense. But like, I love that like there's people in Australia, and we have like a bunch of Australians, and it's like, it's just so cool. Like they're, they're like twelve thousand miles away, but oh, and real know. quick, uh, nuclear Redfield, I, I totally agree with you that I, I understand. I, you were in the chat earlier, like I get it. Like having sex is a big deal. Like I totally get it. Like you never had desire from a woman, never having sex. I'm um, thinking you'll never have a woman in your life. Like that's pretty fucking grim. Um. I'm just saying, like, I think a lot of people are suffering at all. Uh, whether you're a pretty girl or a celebrity, I just think there's suffering uh, in in life, and you know, life is, life and, is suffering. And, and and that's not to downplay like incels or the people like at the bottom of the barrel. Like they probably suffer the most. I get it, but like, yeah, that's like like newsflash. Like life is literally suffering. Like that's kind of like the conclusion I've can't come to. It's actually my, my, my co-host Pat, he, he reminded me of that, that that's what life is. Life is suffering. So when you, you're not suffering dumb, you should maybe, uh, I don't know. I don't want to say, you know, maybe put the, you know, do the whole cross cross <laughs> on your chest or whatever, but, yeah. uh, you know, just enjoy life sometimes. Like, I don't know, like try to appreciate some of the good things in life, you know, the little things, you know, like live a little, like, I don't know, don't, be so stuck in this, you know, uh, existential thought process of it's, it's never going to, you know, it's work. hard because why, why is, I know you're ready to leave. I could talk all night, but it, why it's so difficult is that we, we have to die one day. And, 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 and so, and I think that's your, you're a uh, dumb. I think that you're a, uh, you're a, uh, you're uh, you're like an indicator, like a, like an idiot light on a car. Right where mm -hmm. the light comes on, and that's a warning sign. You are a beacon that young men need to fucking get their ship in order, get their life in order, get their choices in order. Because if you fucking make bad choices, if you, you know, um, you know, you screw up your life, you're gonna turn around and look up one day, and you're gonna be forty, and it's it's fucking over. Yeah. Um, Todd's not wrong. If you're in your late twenties or your mid twenties, you better fucking have some urgency about finding a woman because 
you know, this idea you're going to make it work. Uh, the older you get, the less you have to pick from. Uh, all the good ones were picked, as they as the old say. Don't don't my advice is don't marry, don't settle for somebody because I did that with my wife and and she settled for me and we just it just didn't we didn't like each other enough. I I married her just for sex. I she married me because she wanted to get out of her boyfriend's house. I think I disagree with that, dumb. I think you settle, but you settle much younger so that you can put up with each other's bullshit. But when you're you're in your forties and you're both settling, you both have too much fucking baggage, too much liability. Yeah, she's got a kid or two. Young men and young women will put up with the liability when they get the action in the beginning. I think that's the point, dumb, is that you don't want to wait till you're forty to find love, right? Or or thirty. You were twenty nine. What? 29 no, well 29 when we first met but it was 37 and when uh, we, we got married because we were split up the whole time i just um we we found each other again on facebook and then you know whatever but uh yeah when i first met her i was 29 so but yeah i was trying to get my ass in gear at, back then because i realized you know tick tock tick tock and it just didn't work out back then either and i had to wait until i was 37 and then to find out that it was never going to work anyway but yeah, I settled for her. I, I and it's just not worth it because let's say you you settle for a three hundred pounder, you're not attracted to. You, you don't want to fuck her. You don't want to touch her. You don't want anything to do. Like why are you even married to her? So, you know, I don't know. We're we're, I think we're, that's we're the problem. Dom is that men feel they need a woman to be complete, and that society views them especially lesser without a woman, and that's yeah. why men accept trash women or overweight women or women that are ineligible for marriage because without the woman the man is is on an island he's not he's he has no belonging you know there is something to say about MGTOW and black pill this is this is a gynocentric society first from incel maddox is not wrong if you are a single man in your 30s in america or in the west you're basically an unwanted person a person to be discarded Yep, and, and and then everybody always wants to point to Henry Cavill. Oh, look at him. He's he's Henry Cavill. So you can't just pick the top fucking 0.1% of men and then say, oh, well, look at him. He He's in his late 30s, and he's still desirable. Well, that's that's not the vast, vast, vast majority of men, so knock it off. I hate when they fucking do that. Or they'll look at Jason Statham and say that, oh, you know, he's bald. Yeah, you know, there's there's a few there's a few bald guys in Hollywood that, that still get pussy, but yeah, well, let me add to that. And this will be my final question. Uh, I'm going to add to that. Jason Stratham or Strahan or Strayham or whatever the fuck his name is. No. Well, that's a great indicator of uh, this question. I want to throw at you. This is the last one, dumb. Do you know why you're single? Um, I'm ugly. If I was more attractive, I, I would have been married a long time ago and I, already, I would already have children. I know this just from personal experience and, you know, just, you know, you, you, you go out in the public and see the way you're treated. And, um, uh, just, you know, I, when I went out on blind dates and, uh, you know, the, the look of, of, of disgust on, on the women when they first meet me and, um, you know, so anyway, so yeah, my appearance, um, uh, is, is why I'm single. And, and there's like, some other people said, there's no gym for your face. Don't, don't, don't men know why they're single? Uh, like, like men, like, men do know why like, they're single. They just don't want to admit it. If you're a, if you're a man listening to this stream, right? You know why you're single. Like, and just accept what you like. Accept your lot in life is maybe that's not, what I'm trying to do. That's what. Yeah, right. That's like, what. I'm and, to do. and I guess what I'll say to this dumb is it, it's an equation. Like I see people like looks, money, status, and these other black pillars and lookism. It's like this whole thing about why I am single is an equation. I know why I'm single. Like, I'm not the best looking, you know, or um, like you go down, you go down all the different avenues. Like, okay, um, my standards are too high. Oh, oh, I don't go to church. I'm not religious. I'm an atheist. I smoke cigarettes. I swear. I spit. Yeah. I, I don't put up with women's like boisterous, you know, complaining and bullshit. Like, I know why I'm single because it's that threshold. My right. looks, my status, you know, all this stuff, looks, money, status. Like, 
I, I, I got all this, this all, you know, I'm, you know, you're doing all the, the calculations and it's like, okay, I've got my, my status. Where do I fall on the hierarchy? And then where are my standards? Oh, I, I'm not willing to accept a single mom or, or I'm not willing to accept an overweight woman, or I'm not willing to marry a woman under the, you know, over the age 25. Like, like it, it really has to boil us down to sta- part of its standards. And I think that with women and their behavior mm-hmm. and with what women's, you know, how they've composed themselves the last 20 years, they're just not good suitors for relationships. So I'm I not, agree. I blame myself. I blame the women. I blame society. And I blame, it's just, it, it's, it's, it's literally just something that's not going to work for me. And it's not going to work for a lot of men. And I believe that it's by design. So, so, so yeah, I agree. Just accept we, we have to, I don't know how we do it, but you got to accept the cards you were dealt in life and just deal with, deal with it somehow. Well, dumb, dumb. Now that we have this, this understanding that begs the question, it sort of reminded me when I was in the movies, I, I'm a big movie fan. My dad took me to the movies all my life and he took me to the movie true lies back in the nineties. Great movie. I like Sports movie. movie. Yeah. And in the movie, there's this Middle Eastern man in a restaurant with a bomb strapped to him. And he's, you know, expressing like Muslim, you know, theocracy or whatever. And he blows himself up. And when I was a young person in the 90s, I was probably 12. I didn't know what that was. I didn't understand it. I'm like a white guy watching this movie. And like Arnold Schwarzenegger's like the Chad Aryan in the movie. And he's like the good guy. And you see this like dirty, like brown sand person like <laughs> kill, kill himself in a restaurant. Yeah. And you forget like, like I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't know that dumb. I didn't, I didn't understand like, why was this happening? And like, they don't really tell you. It's just, that's just life. Some people are angry and it's like, well, wait, no, some people are genetically flawed. And, and I guess that's the question that begs dumb. It's we've, we, we have this understanding after this stream and it's like, well, what are you going to do about it, bud? Because violence, I don't think is in your wheelhouse, but I think that's are you, are you asking me. Or yeah. I guess I, I'm, it's like you're being pressed dumb. Like, like I, I'm talking, I'm talking about a Hollywood movie, but, but that's real where men are so unwanted. They're willing to commit acts of violence. Yeah. I would never, I think, I think that's what society is worried about. Society you know, they had a recipe for incel men, a, 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 a society for single people. This society is full of lonely people and mm-hmm. it's been designed that way. Well, what are what are, is one to do? You know, if if you're this guy who's unwanted and unmarried and childless, I think they're worried about you, dumb. I think that the establishment is worried. What is dumb going to do now? <laughs> I. Yeah, I, I'm never violent. You know, um, I, I I don't even blame the women for rejecting me. I I blame my genetics and, and my parents for having me. I don't. I blame God. I'm angry at them. I'm not angry at the general public or or women. I, I, I'm really not. It's not their fault. They find me undesirable, and it's not really my fault either. And so it's just, yeah, you just got to deal with it somehow. I don't know. I I don't really have any advice for what. You're just gonna have to accept, you know, that that you that you were born the way you were born. I, I don't know how you do it. I'm trying to do it myself. It's a struggle, and it's a question you maybe have to ask yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, what are you gonna do? Because you watch yeah, that cool. movie. Uh, you watch a movie like Independence Day, when the president asks the alien, "What do you want us to do?" Die. <laughs> And that's what you got to think about, dumb. That's what you got to think about, dumb. Dumb, you're a good person. You're a good soul. Yeah. You have a good spirit. You've got a good heart. But not the, the rest of the world doesn't. And they want you They want you to die. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to sound too, like, you know. No, Todd always said that. He's like, yeah, they just want you to die. And, and it's um, just kind and, of brutal, man. So I yeah. guess what I would say, dumb, is maybe don't die, bro, bud. Like, don't die. Yeah. Like, let's, no, stay I mean, I, let's stay I, alive I, and annoy these people a little longer. How's that sound? Yeah. No, I'm not currently suicidal. I'm just saying, you know, I I, I, I would just rather I'm not existed, but you know, I didn't have that option. So yeah, I mean, I mean, here's the thing about roping is that you 
you're going to die anyway. And if your life is worthless, I mean, and you hate it and you're suffering for for whatever reason, for, for emotional pain or physical pain or you're handicapped, whatever the reason. I mean, it does make logical sense because why suffer for another five years, 10 years, 50 years? But it's still a very hard thing to do. And it's not, I don't know. I don't it's know if it's maybe really. Maybe spite good. enough? <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I don't know if it's really the. It, it, I mean, well, it kind of does fix the problem because you're no longer here. It, it's just you can't recommend it though because you're not supposed to. And then I can't. And it's something I can't do myself. It, it, it's, it, it's difficult. We have something inside of us that. Well, why don't just you you know stick around a while, dumb, and uh, be a thorn in the you know, feminist you know gyno center. They don't care what I'm doing. They they don't well, give a shit. They don't yeah, care but, what I'm. But you're still all right. You're, you're still alive. You're still like, alive, bud. Like I'm just gonna be rotting somewhere. Like they don't give a fuck. With it. They're, you know, they, they don't miss me on the dating market. They don't miss me in the job market. They don't give a fuck. It, it doesn't matter if I'm here or not. So, uh, yeah, uh, fair enough. Yeah, I, I mean, there's no Todd always said there's no good solutions. I mean, there really isn't. You you just gotta distract yourself, cope, and until you die. And if that's before you. You know, if you do it by your own hands or you just die of a heart attack or whatever, I mean, you're going to, either way, you're going to die. And um, it just, it just sucks. We were dealt the hand that we were dealt. Uh, and But there's nothing you can do about it. So yeah, I agree with you. Try to enjoy your life. Go out and golf or go ride your four wheeler or something. Go, go try to have fun. It's just, that's also hard. It's, but, but yeah, we got to try to do these things. We got to try to, I mean, that's why I went down to Florida and I was trying to do things. I'm trying to, I was, I, I well, and build then, your channel dumb. Build your channel up. Uh, I think you should do some more React videos. Maybe dismantle the trucky, the trucking YouTubers. You know, tear them apart. Go after the truckers at the YouTube space. Tell them well, why. Tell they, them why. You know, you could do videos and do reaction videos. Like, all these, I should do all that. These, all these, all these truckers. But, you know, they give these guys tips to be like, you know, to you know, all these tips about trucking. You could just be like, ah, he'll just be a. You know, you could just refute everything they're saying because you're, you know, you're a trucker and you could just. I don't know. A lot of, yeah, you could you could you could bring value, you know. And a lot bringing, of them haven't been doing it very long. Yeah, bringing pushback and 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 discouraging young people from ever driving a truck, and that'd probably be a good thing. Well, don't drive a truck because guess what? You're not going to get a girlfriend <laughs> and wife. You're going to be alone. Driving. I don't know. I um see no, the thing. But, uh, but build your just you know keep working on your YouTube, man. Yeah. Yeah, but the, th the thing is, is I I, I just kind of want to I don't really want to put any effort into the YouTube. I, I just want to come on and talk, and so like I don't want to have to. I don't. I mean, unless there was a way I was going to make money or something, it cannot frankly, be. This, frankly, dumb. That's your appeal, man. Like, but this it can't whole, like, be this. You channel, don't need a big production. You're the you, your YouTube channel is how YouTube's supposed to be. Oh yeah, yeah. Back back in the old days, it was just people who turned the camera on and just and just talked. But I mean, I don't know. I guess I could. I mean, if people wanted to to to, to see stuff like that, but I'm not making a whole other channel or something. I'm not putting any effort into it. I'm, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. I'm not, <laughs> but uh, yeah, a lot of the, the problem with most of YouTube is that everybody wants to make money. I I want to make money too, but you know they're selling something. I mean, I, I was watching anxiety. Like I, I had a lot of anxiety, so of course I went on YouTube and I was trying to see what other people's solutions were. And there was this guy who was telling his story, and at the end he was selling a course on on, on what he did to to end his his um it was, it was more specifically yeah death, it, death anxiety. Dumb, dumb, the whole, dumb. The whole economy is a grift now, man. Yeah, so everything's just grifting. But but it kind of refuted like everything he said before. It's like. Give me some help, goddammit. I watched your whole goddamn video. Now you're telling me I gotta buy this goddamn course for he didn't even say how much it was because he was probably embarrassed. And you're supposed to help. Like I that's why, like, I don't I don't want I don't ever want to be perceived as that. I don't want to ever be perceived that my YouTube is all about fucking making goddamn money. And you know, and, and, and you know, maybe I could have a channel that was all about making money and then I could just you know say whatever I wanted. But I mean, as far as this one. Like, like I, I'm coming up with an anxiety video right now. I got 10 tabs up on my screen about all these things. I'm trying to resolve anxiety, uh, my, my anxiety. But guess what I'm not going to do? I'm not going to try to sell a freaking course at the end of, of the video. Of course, I don't really have that much motivation to, to make a, a course anyway. Yeah, that's, part of my, that's, part of, that's part of your... Uh... 
<laughs> what are your appeals? <laughs> um, uh, you know, just being raw, being real, um, you know, putting yourself out there. Like, that's that's the appeal of your channel. So, thanks, man. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Uh, you know, uh, if you can make, you know, if you can monetize your channel, do it, though. I mean, no, yeah, yeah, what it, yeah, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be this one, but you don't have to go um, out of your way to like sell fucking, you know, merchandise or whatever, but yeah, yeah it just, be uh, you know, I just want to say, yeah, hi. yeah. <laughs> just keep, keep working on your channel, man. Uh, people love yeah. you, man, and just don't, don't worry about the haters, man. You know, people that hate on you in the comment section, fuck them, you know, yeah. who gives a shit, but. Yeah, yeah, I gotta, I gotta get better with that. That's that's why I like Todd as well, because people will just come on and troll him and call him ugly, and he'll be like, "Yeah, I am." <laughs> he doesn't, he doesn't give a shit. Like, I really need to, to be like that, um, and just you know, water off a duck's back. It's it's harder, harder said than done, but that's what I'll, I'll try to do. All right, Dom, I'm gonna wrap it up here. Uh, you know, I want to thank you and I appreciate sure. you for coming on the channel and just. And thanks for inviting me. This was this was fun. It was a good conversation. So I hope everybody enjoyed it. And, yeah, uh, man, and uh, your your I put the link in your of your channel in the description. Oh, cool! Thanks. So, if anybody wants to go check out Dumb and Depressed Unwanted Man's channel, uh, <laughs> go ahead and look in the description and you stream. How often you stream, Dumb? Who, who's who's not so unwanted because uh, because of YouTube? Um, uh, I I don't know. I never schedule it. It's just uh, sometimes it's it's usually at, at night, but sometimes it's in the morning. Um, it just I just stream whenever, so. Did you uh, you have any a particular film that you like that you'd like me to review? Oh yeah, that's right. You did all those film reviews. Um, my favorite movie of all time is Superman the movie, the 1977 one. So, 1977 Superman. I'll keep that. Yeah. On. I'll put that on the list. Okay, Dom. Yeah. All right. And then uh, you know, maybe we'll have another chat in the in the coming weeks or months. Okay, bud. I'll reach out to you. Yeah, sure. Anytime. I, I'm, and I want to thank. I'm unemployed, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, I, I want to thank you for your time, man. Yeah. All right. Have a good Appreciate night. It. Yep. You too. Bye, everybody. See ya.